Good evening, Ted. Can anyone hear me? It's Ted. Hi, Ted. It's Barry. Hi, Barry. How are you doing? Good. Okay. I'm not getting a picture. Uh, at least I'm getting a voice. Uh, you should just be seeing the logo right now or the whatever it is, letterhead. Okay. That sounds good because that's what I'm seeing. Excellent. So... Uh, how does it feel for you not to be having to worry about so many things? Well, uh, <laughs> it doesn't feel any less worrisome than it has previously. Um, there's still plenty to worry about in terms of the the mental health clinic on 145th and the rezoning of Morningside, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, but... I have to say that in I, I was reflecting today about when I became chair in late June of 2019 and remembering how little I knew or was aware of because I had not been a vice chair at the time. So, you know, I wasn't CC'd on most of Padmore's email traffic and I wasn't, you know, in the meetings prior. So it was a big adjustment. And I'm hoping that it's a much smaller adjustment for Victor as he takes over because he's, you know, on all of this communication already. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, one of the good things about your involvement has been making certain that everybody has been involved. Well, I've tried. <laughs> yeah, right. So anyway, we're very lucky uh, that you were able to do something that a lot of other people weren't able to do. And that is you have built a, a group of people that are there. And so... I'm delighted that there are people out there that are not uh, coming in nude. Yes. Thank you, Ted. That means a lot. Um, I, I was reflecting also on some of the craziness that we've lived through. And I ran the numbers again. And... 55 establishments in our community district received a total of over $15 million in restaurant relief fund grants. Um, That's during, Yeah, and I, I forgot how 
well we'd done with that. Um, so I was pleased to remember that. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, the restaurants did well, uh, but there were an awful lot of our community that didn't. Yes, I remember that as well. Um, but we have seen, I think, a lot fewer vacant storefronts in the district compared to 2019. Good evening, Daria. You're muted, but. You could tell I said good evening. <laughs> yeah. Good evening, Ted. How you doing? Pretty good. Barry, I just wrote you a long letter. Um, all right. You know, I, I have an incentive to wait a week because then it's Victor's problem. <laughs> well, it's I sent it to both of you, so it's uh, it's both of your me. problem anyway. Yes. It, it's I, just I, a, it's just some some talk about quality of life and about um a possible ad hoc committee um and about institutional knowledge. There are so many things in the uh, neighborhood that are falling into the cracks, like, you know, like the the influx of drug abusers is health. However, the fact that children have to walk over them while they're walking to their school across the street, that kind of is uh, in a crack. It doesn't really fall into one place or the other um and th little things like that little things well that's a big thing you know things like that um I've just especially since the pandemic have been keenly aware of um so I just wanted to bring that up and the institutional knowledge piece and it's funny because these two are the ones that I think of the most um because our term limits are about to kick in um, that's another thing that sort of falls into the cracks um, that nobody specifically is looking at. And we've been a leader in this city. And um, part of that is because of the, the knowledge that's been passed down. When somebody only has two years experience, they're going to be hard pressed to pass a lot of knowledge to the next people. And while we still have people you know, that have been on here for decades, I really think that we need to implement something, some sort of system. That's a good point. Carolyn, you, you, you got something on fire on your desk there? I saw smoke coming up. <laughs> My candles. <laughs> Very good. All right. We got enough fire in this, in this place. This smells like, it smells like the, the neighborhood is burning. Well, I think that would smell much worse. It smells like a campfire, like real, real wood, as opposed to, I remember when they had the fire on 140th Street. Oh, God, the smell was awful. Um, this this is more of a wood smoke, at least. Mm. Um, actually, if you ever walk over the Riverside Viaduct while Dinosaur is smoking their meat, it smells like hickory smoke. It's, it's a little bit like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. And I don't watch the news. My news is the community board. <laughs> right, right. So I didn't know when the, when the sky turned orange, I was like, Jesus, are you coming today? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I Googled uh, day before yesterday, I Googled, why is the sky yellow NYC? Um, oh, wow. Because I because I looked outside and I saw the sky being yellow and I could smell some smoke and there had been a fire in Riverside Park a couple of weeks ago. And then a month or two ago when we had this, there were like fires in Rockland County. Um, and so but I was like, oh, all the way from Canada. Wow. Um, Crazy. Did you know, did you know there were two to change the subject a little bit? Speaking of rivers, did you know there were two boys? pulled from the river there was an 11 year old boy pulled from the um the Harlem. Hudson 
Um, and a 13 year old boy pulled from Harlem River. That was, what, was that only last week? God, that feels like several weeks ago already. Yeah, like, um, and they were together earlier. Yep. And so, like, you don't, if your friend just fell in one river, you don't take yourself to the other river and fall in. There's a whole investigation going on about that because it seems strange where one is one place and the other one is another place. But right now they are investigating. Yeah. That doesn't sound right. Crazy. Mm. It's crazy. It is. It is. Brother was um, up in Canada at this moment and he says that the smoke from Quebec has turned around and is going from Quebec into Ontario, which is very unusual because Ontario is to the west of Quebec. Hmm. That's strange. Yeah. It's very all of it's very strange. Yeah. I, I, I don't think about how the wind usually blows west to east until we get a nor'easter and suddenly the trees are moving the opposite direction. And then I'm like, oh, that's very strange. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good evening, Joyce and Victor. Hello there. Good evening, Darian, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, hey, can I ask y'all another question so I don't have to be asking a whole lot of questions during the during the meeting? Chair, since the two chairs are on. Um uh to the it's 28. I'll talk fast. Um can we use our privileges to help our the artists, our art organizations? Um, they, I think it's a hundred dollars for them to post things for their um, events and things. And I wonder if there is a way to help at least the ones who come to the meeting um, to use our priv, you know, use our free privileges to help them. Host where? On the, oh, sorry, the link NYC kiosk. Barry, did you get that? Uh, I did not quite. Help who post on the link kiosk? The artists and art organizations who are having events. Yes. I, I I think we can. Okay, great. And um, would we just like post it for, well, we'll talk about it offline, I guess. Uh, we'll figure yeah, out I'm, we'll I'm not totally um, savvy on the procedure for that. I know Yutha knows more about it. Yeah, it's simply mm -hmm. contacting somebody and having them put it up. But you know, if they contact them, if the organizations contact them on their own, they're like from the website, it's a uh, hundred dollars up. Wow. Really? Okay. Yeah. Didn't know that. Interesting. I thought there was a community calendar kind of feature, um, but I'll 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 talk to you for, or you can talk to you. For two yeah, two. I called her up, but the mayor's office called while I was talking to her, so I got trumped. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I called too, but I was not valuable enough to trump you. <laughs> I, I I looked into it for the um, cannabis event, and we can we can definitely as a community board, um, they'll post for us for free if we're affiliated with the event. Um, there is a format, and it's like five or ten days lead time that you have to give them. Um, but again, we kind of have to be affiliated with it for it to be free because it that's how they make their money, charging people. Or don't make their money, as it turns out, given this given this 5G tower situation. Wow. But uh, but it's it's not difficult. Um, they just have to design it to the format 
because again, they'll they'll charge a fee if they design it for you. Got well, it. Is there any? Does anybody know why there are none on St. Nicholas Avenue? By the way, they probably ran out of money. Is my guess. <laughs> oh. I mean, remember, people were not so keen on them when they came yeah. out. Mm -hmm. They were a test. Right. That's mm -hmm. true. Um, and then it turns out they made way less money than they thought they would. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they, they got, they got stuck. They stopped rolling them out. And then, um, and now they have these stupid 5G towers in an attempt to get them more money. Yeah. It just, you know, New York has a lot of things and very little education because they forget that people, you can put up something like those and people walk past them every day and utilize them, but they never really utilize them and never ask questions about how. They just don't, we're so used to so many, I think it's just information overload. And so if there's never any specific like education, if there's never a commercial or a, you know, a way to let people know, hey, you can use these, people don't even think about that they can use them. People are very surprised when we bring it up at our meeting. And, and sometimes, Daria would say that that is done purposely because then questions come about about the safety. Like the 5G towers in our committee, um, we have had several presentation of the potential hazard that this can have to human you. health. Um, so, you know, you're right. There should be more education and transparency when these things are going to come, especially in a city like ours that there is so um, dense. Mm -hmm. I will also say as a communications person, um, if you're a communications person, you dig into these, you know what I mean? Like there's people who are interested in these things and like it, you would go to an, an agency to get the services to place your media in all these different channels like that. That's what advertising used to do. And that's what you would pay an agency for media. They would buy media. This is a, an example of media that an agency would buy for you. Right. You and I would do that. And, you know, no, but that's what I'm saying. Traditionally, that is how advertising worked. Yeah. It evolved. But it now pe when people are trying to do it themselves, sometimes they don't think of, and sometimes they'll. I think they do. I think they ways. do. If, if you're a small well, business. I'm telling you that the people that have come to our meeting, many of them have been surprised when that's, I bring it up. They've been surprised. What no. are you, Dari, I'm sorry, because I missed a few minutes. Good evening, everyone. Are you referencing yes. a kiosk? Yes. Link. Yeah? yeah? The Link NYC. The Link NYC kiosk? Okay. And you're saying a lot of people don't know that it is available to them? To they you? don't know it's available. We were talking about how they didn't, Barry was talking about how they didn't make as much money as they expected. And I was saying because People don't know they're available to them. People don't know, you know what I mean? Like people looking for things. Sometimes it's right there in front of your face and you don't even think about asking about it just because New York has so much stuff. Mm -hmm. You might not even pay attention necessarily. Okay. Right. A lot of people, like she said, don't know, but I find a lot of people up this way, you, they use them. I see them see them. Mm -hmm on the ground, you know, using the uh, kiosk, you know, so to speak. Yeah, they got good Wi-Fi. They got, if I need to download something, like if it's a huge file, I'll go outside and stand next to it. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, it is fat. It is, when I say speedy. Oh, okay. Way speedier oh. than, than in the house. <laughs> good to but, know. And they use them for that stuff. They'll use them, you know, people, when when you stop, you figure out, oh, I can actually make a phone call on this thing, or mm -hmm. oh, I can actually charge um, your phone. My, there charge your phone. phone. Yeah. Yeah, there's no there's no more phones. <laughs> yeah, but right. nobody nobody said that. And you have to stop and look at it. And we are notorious for walking past stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, we're the city that lets that leave celebrities alone when the rest of the world stops and gawks and stuff we're we're notorious for just walking past stuff and i think that has happened with those kiosks in in a lot of ways um you know in the utilization way and also oh, like yeah. um dr torres was saying uh also yeah. in maybe the health and safety 
they, they actually had a meeting at City Hall um, in regards to this um, because of the um, of the safety concerns with health that they have. Um, there's still a lot of questions unanswered. Um, well, you're talking about the Link NYC as well as the. No, 5G? no, these are the towers, the big towers, the five G towers that they're putting up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's no uh, way think... the whole other one. There's yeah, no way you demand the NYC thing because it's on every other block. If I walk up the street, I have to pass it. The course. The, the Link NYC, they, they don't have the five G. No, no, no. We're talking about separate stuff. Um, okay. I see we've been joined by Pat, who officially makes us at Quorum. And yay, to yay! Oh. I feel special now. I created the Quorum. Thank oh, you, everyone. Thank you so much. You're take your, special, take your, Pat. take your bow. I will. Um, and you're, this is a bright spot in a day where there's Canadian wildfires all over the place, and we're breathing. We're not having. We're not breathing well. I am glad to be here. Good evening, everyone. Yes. Good evening, you are, Pat. You are good, right. Good evening, good evening, <laughs> yeah, you also just joined us. Um, but I'm going to call us to order at 6.37 p.m. here. We have, I think, 14 or 15 out of our 20-ish uh, executive committee members <laughs> present. And that gives us... I love those glasses, Monique. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> God, I had him once. Thank you. Um, so uh, with us called to order at 6.37 p.m. here, um, the next item is the agenda, which I am trying to share. Uh, I think I have the old agenda, though. Um, Avenue. One moment, because I think that um, youth has sent out a revised one. Oh, uh, what time? 522? <laughs> well, I have the 526 one. Oh, okay. Um, Barry, should no, I Barry? call the roll? Oh, Go okay. ahead, Ted. Yeah, if you call the roll, that way I'll find the agenda. No, oh, you the know. revised agenda was only sent once, so... Barry got it at 526. Someone else got it at 522. I only sent it one time. Okay. Wow, that's interesting. Okay. okay. It, it's probably the Wi Fi. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. Go outside and stand next to the link. I'm telling you, <laughs> it'll change your life. <laughs> oh, Lord. People hovering about uh, around uh, near the kiosk. And now, gonna... um, so uh, Ted, go ahead and call the roll. Yeah, Joyce. Oh, I'm here. I'm driving. So if you need me, I may not be able to respond again. Okay. Okay. Aki. Okay. Okay. <laughs> William. Deidre. She's here. She is here. Yes, Deidre's here. Oh, I'm sorry, Daria. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> Okay, Carlton. Maretta. Victor. Present. John Martin. Now, uh, Daria Hardiman, I present. okay. Monique, uh, present. Laquita, present. Heather, present. Pat, I'm here, present. Stand here. Uh, we have Ilana Mercado with an LOA, Signey. Uh, Signe, I think, is excused tonight. She had a death in the family. Oh. Sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. Solomon. Then you're here. I am oh. here. Okay. Uh, do you want me to take minutes, or do you want to? 
I have it. I can do it. Okay. Not a problem. Ted, did you call me, Miriam? Hi, Ted. And also Edwin, you didn't call. No, no, Edwin, he's only on the P's, but I think he did call Miriam. Oh, okay, cool. Thank you. Miriam. Aristi Ferrer. Present. Okay, I am now checking you. Great. Jonathan. Uh, is no longer on the board. Oh, no, synagogue. Yes, 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 sorry. Uh, he's still with us. Uh, he's excused, though. Oh, okay. Oh. Okay. Carolyn? Here. Edwin? I know you're here. I'm um, here, Ted. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I don't know. Who, did you, who did you call? Liz. Oh, Liz. Um, not here yet. Okay. Barry, I know you're here. Present and accounted for. And Shanika. Not here yet. Not yet. Three, four, seven, ten, thirteen, fifteen. We have a quorum, Mr. Chair. Good show. All right. Um, so I am going to share my screen now um, to show the agenda. I have a proposed amendment to the agenda, but first, does anyone else have any other proposed amendments to the agenda? Yes, uh, this is Laquita. Um, I have an elections committee report, and I had problem with my internet, so I couldn't get anything else out yesterday and it won't be repaired. So I'm really, I'm sitting at a Starbucks. Well, <laughs> you're, on, I have the you're, you're on the agenda under reports number four, nominating an elections committee. Uh, let me open up. Okay, so um, I don't have that, but okay, number four, elections committee. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, Barry, I have one, but it's a minor one. It's just a typo. Um, mm -hmm. For the liquor license, new application, on uh, number four, it says it's the gateway, but the name of it is called the getaway. Ah, either would have worked, but I get it. All right. So <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, I'm going to have one more addition which I think is from it's it's in advance of how of the meeting, but we have um, a proposal, a text amendment before us on the city of yes carbon neutrality um, item, and so I'm going to add that it's it's really just a vote to put it on the agenda. There is no draft reso yet because the meeting has not occurred. Um, What's that? Oh, what is it? Neutrality? Carbon neutrality. It's 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 an amendment to the city's zoning code. Barry, can you renumber the items? Because yes, of my thank you. I manually numbered them. Um does anyone have any other action items? All right, a motion to adopt the amenda at the agenda as amended would be in order. Second. Moved by Carolyn, seconded by Daria. All those in favor of adopting the agenda as amended say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The agenda has been adopted with amendments. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the adoption of the minutes from our May 11th meeting. They were included with your packet. So moved. Second. Moved Second. Moved by Carolyn, seconded by Dr. Torres. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. All right, the ayes have it. The minutes have been adopted. Um, I am happy to now give my chair's report. Um, we are finally going to take a position on the proposed project at 1727 Amsterdam Avenue. Okay. This is a big deal this month. I mean, we may vote it down, um, but but the, the motion will be before us next week to pass a resolution on it. 
and I think this comes at a key point. Um, but I want to just take a moment and express my deep outrage isn't the right word. Frustration isn't either, um, which, I guess, at the audacity of Health and Hospitals Corporation and the Department of Housing Preservation and Development that they are illegally proposing to do this project in our neighborhood without going through Euler. And, okay. you know, throughout this process, we've asked the HHC why they think they own the land. And it was recently brought to my attention that HHC filed an affidavit in July of last year swearing that the city owned the land, that HHC did not. And this affidavit and this swearing was made by someone where the, the exact person we had asked in a meeting why we why he thought that they own the land. So this is, again, as a reminder, a project that we only found out about by accident that has been cooking for three or more years and that proposes to curtail health care and medical and mental health care in our neighborhood. and you know, construct a project that none of us have had any input on with a timeline that doesn't allow us to give any input and that attempts to circumvent the charter mandated uniform land use re review process, mm -hmm. which is required anytime city owned real estate is leased or otherwise disposed of. And Again, just the audacity <laughs> that they think they can do this in our neighborhood continues to astound and infuriate me. Um, Barry? Yes, Monique. Um, when I had shared with you that they had presented to the Harlem cab um, and the person whose name is escaping me representing HHC presented, and you know, I spoke out as well as other members saying that it wasn't right for them to be doing what they were doing, they gave the impression that there was still room to speak with them and to work in partnership. And that was just last month, which is why I asked you, were they coming before us this month? So now what you're saying, it sounds like it's a done deal and we don't have much say, which is upsetting because that means they lied. <laughs> I mean, from my opinion, they've been lying from the start. Um, the very first words out of their mouth, coherent words, when I asked them about this was, I don't think you're supposed to know about that yet. Oh. And, and that is etched in my brain. Um, and every time we've made suggestions to them yeah. about the number of units or the composition of units or this, that, or the other thing, they have rejected them. So a willingness to take input when all of our input is being rejected is not a real willingness to take input. Um, and anyway, so this is an important item that will come before us um, and we will need our council members support to make, well, or a judge's support to make sure that this project does not move forward without Euler. Um, and so that is a major item on our agenda, and I just want everyone to understand the importance of it. The draft resolution is 11 pages long before attachments and appendices. Jeez. Wow. Huh. So oh, boy. Yutha will be sending out the draft, which has not emerged yet from housing, zoning, and land use, along with the attachments tomorrow, and we'll be urging everyone to read it ahead of time, ahead of the general meeting next week. Um, because, you know, we want everyone to come prepared and feel like they're well-versed in this and not feel rushed. But 11 pages is a big reso. Right. Um, but we systematically detail the ways they've lied to us um, and are violating the charter. Um, Do we have the support from our, our representatives? Do we know their position? Uh, well, we have not yet taken a position officially on our own. I'm sure we can find out their position once we've delineated ours. Okay. Um, I will also say that, um, so moving on from 1727, I don't want to spend the whole time there. Uh, 
the situation with billiards on Broadway has been complicated by a call with the SLA today in which we were informed the billiards bar has no active liquor license, temporary or otherwise, oh. which means that their selling of alcohol without a license is now a criminal matter. Uh -huh. oh. um, so that is a small update there. The NYPD and the SLA and the DEP are working on it. Um, <clears throat> the Morningside Heights rezoning is meeting with opposition from the D Department of City Planning staff um, who are saying that they haven't done a rezoning like this since Bloomberg. That, of course, neglects the fact that they aren't doing this rezoning. We are. Um, and if they wanted to do a rezoning differently, they had plenty of opportunity to do so in the past 10 years that we've requested they do, that they do it or more. So these objections are political and ideological. They are not technical. Um, and I think that as this proceeds, we will have to continue to make it very clear to them that, you know, they should not allow their ideological or political biases to impact a community-led rezoning, for which we have already made many, many compromises. Um, also, um, I want to just take a moment to step back and look at the things that we have done over the past four years, because it's always very easy to focus on all of the things in front of us that we have yet to do or the battles we are fighting. Um, but it does behoove us every now and then to put things in perspective. And so the past four years, this board has moved offices in a very difficult way. No thanks to DCAS. We have had the departure of two staff members with a combined over 40 years worth of experience and hired their replacements. We have uh, successfully went door to door to restaurants and food establishments in our neighborhood, encouraging them to apply for restaurant relief funding, 55 of which received funding uh, of an average amount of I think it was $120,000 in grant money that does not need to be repaid. Um, we ensured that our neighborhood had access to COVID vaccines. We distributed PPE. We went virtual with an area hiccup, really. I mean, we were the first community board to hold a virtual general board meeting in March of 2020. We have since transitioned to hybrid meetings fairly successfully. Um, we have done so much, more than I am remembering right now even. Um, we, we negotiated a change in a homeless shelter, an additional affordable housing building, and a $250,000 community benefits fund. Um, you know, all of this has happened and it's taken an enormous amount of effort and time and energy and dedication from everyone here and a few people who aren't here, um, including some folks we lost along the way, especially, of course, April Tyler and Walter South. Um, and in taking stock of all of that, I just want to say to all of you, thank you for putting in all of the time and energy and effort that you have to make this community board what it is. Um, it has been an honor serving as your chair um, and one of the best experiences of my life. Um, and so I, I really just wanted to take a moment to think about all that we've accomplished and to say thank you. Um, and thank you, of course, and especially to Yutha who has got to be the hardest working and best district manager in all of New York City for any community board. Um, and I hope, Yutha, you know how much we all value you. I do, Barry, and it's bittersweet. I'm glad you will continue in the position as first vice chair. It has been a pleasure working with you, and uh, I look forward to continuing our work together. 
thing. Um, so I will I will just close up my chair's report here with a few more items. Tish James, our attorney general, her charities bureau has taken some offense or umbrage or concern with the community benefits fund that is being established as part of our resolution or letter of support for the homeless shelter. Hmm. And we are attempting to schedule a call or meeting with them to answer any questions. Of course, did they contact us about this? No, they did not. They contacted the developer. Um, you know, God forbid they use the phone number that's on the letterhead for that letter. Um, but so that is an ongoing discussion. Um, additionally, the um, Department of City Planning has may has begun the district needs and community budget priorities process early this year and has begun opening the floor to that now. So you may get emails from the treasurer over the summer asking you as committee co-chairs to begin either drafting contributions to the statement of district needs or um, putting forth some budget priorities. I have also asked the Manhattan Borough President's Office to consider doing a special budget training like a budget 202 as opposed to a 101, where we will go over how to read the preliminary budget documents put out by the mayor's office in January and identify line items for specific projects or programs, because that was something we did do this year, but we could probably use a little more training on. Um, so be on the lookout for that. You will get homework over the summer. <laughs> Uh, this is a time when everybody goes boo to the teacher, but um, but that is something that we need to be paying attention to now as opposed to in August. Um, and with that, I will conclude my chair's report. Uh, Ted here, a uh, question. Um, with regard to the reappointments, uh, has a letter been sent out to uh, the new membership and uh, reappointed membership uh, from the VP's office? Letters have been sent out informing of the, them of their appointment or reappointment or lack thereof. Interesting, because I haven't gotten anything. Um, I will look into that then, Ted. Um, you are reappointed. You're on my roster. I was going to say that, Ted, you are definitely reappointed. We have you on the list. Yeah, I saw that and uh, was uh, pleased because I look forward to working uh, for another two years for my community. And we are grateful for that service. Yeah. Um, but we are in the process of making committee assignments for the new members. Um, and while we're, we're happy to report that there will be some new members for senior issues and a few other committees that have, um, smaller memberships, we are running into the fact that there are a few committees that everyone wants to be on, some of which that are already quite large. So as a general rule of thumb, I have tried to keep committee memberships at nine members or lower. Uh, for the simple fact that once you get to 10, quorum becomes six and seems to be much harder to achieve. Um, but we hope to get those committee assignments ironed out by the end of the month. Um, so uh, we may be contacting you to find out about your committee, your existing committee members' attendance records and talk to them if they might be better off serving on a different committee, maybe at a time that works better for them. Um, but uh, in particular, health and environment, youth education and libraries, uniform services, and housing, zoning and land use seem to be the hot committees that, if we went with everybody's stated preferences, would have more than nine members. You already have eight. You have nine, actually, Carol. I counted. Um, 
Um, uh, Joyce, you have your hand up. Yes, Mary, thank you so much. Um, I wanted to find out, would it be redundant if we were to utilize LinkedIn mm -hmm. to ask the community to weigh in on what they feel this community needs as per the committees that we have. So do several ads or it could be anything, but just um, ask the community to weigh in, give us their information or their idea, sorry, there's a, of what they think the needs in the community are. Um, that I think is an excellent idea and one that Victor has already spoke, to, talked about doing at our candidates night. And so I think that might be a conversation uh, that you might want to pursue with the first vice chair um, in anticipation of his becoming chair. Um, but that has already been talked about and a budget talked about for that survey. So um, great minds think alike and you and Victor are on the same wavelength. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay. okay. Um, Walter. Uh, I haven't received official notification either, nor have I seen the list of reappointments or non-appointments. Can that be forwarded to me? You know what? Uh, yes, it can. And also, if anyone would like, I will just pull up the official roster we received right now. Um, uh, Miriam, you have your hand up. Yes, my question is um, the Cannabis Task Force. Since you just mentioned one, two, three, four, four committees, Youth, Health, Uniformed Housing, that have more than nine members, we there are times that it's just Daria, Monique, and myself. And this is a subject that is about, it, it, it involves all the committees and we've been actively asking all the committee members to send a member and we just do not get any participation in this committee. I mean, in this task force. So I'm just wondering, is that, is it possible to assign people or ask people to attend the task force because we could use help? Um, so we actually were having conversations about this as well. Um, but right. the, the, the existing standing committees for the community board are, um, uh, arts and culture, economic development, West Harlem peers, health and environment, housing, zoning, and land use, landmarks, preservation, and parks, Uniform Services, Transportation, and Youth Education and Libraries. I don't think I forgot any of them. The existing ad hoc committees, which we frequently wind up calling task forces, um, include uh, the Cannabis Task Force, the Same Gender Loving LGBTQ Task Force, the Strategic Planning Committee, and um, then there's also a subcommittee that kind of functions like a task force, which is the film and television um, subcommittee. So generally speaking, we do not assign people to ad hoc committees. Um, you know, we can badger committees to send representatives. We can, you know, urge people to go, but we can't assign them um, with the exception of the elections committee, which is specified in bylaws. Um, we have been talking about potentially assigning some folks to an ad hoc committee as a committee assignment. You know, we want everyone to serve on at least two committees. Um, one person has already requested to join Cannabis um, as one of their two committees. And so that is something that we are discussing. Um, it may wind up being, it may wind up taking the form that if we assign someone to a committee, to an ad hoc committee, we will hold them accountable for attendance as if it were their standing committee assignment. That may require a bylaws change. We could elevate an ad hoc committee to a standing committee by a vote of the full board. But that, you know, these are discussions that we're actively having. But generally speaking, we cannot force anyone to attend an ad hoc uh, committee because they are ad hoc committees. Okay. Thank you. Um, and Heather, you have your hand up. 
Yeah, Barry, I just want to thank you for your thoughtful email um, regarding adding more members to landmarks and parks. I am um, I want to respond to you also in kind in writing. I just haven't had the opportunity, but thank you so much because we really do need the help. Yes. Um, so I've got on my screen the roster as we received it for the FY24 and 25 board. Um, you will see at the top people whose term expires in two years who were appointed or reappointed this year, and at the bottom folks who were appointed last year or were appointed to fill vacancies uh, in terms that end in 2024. Um, you can also see who appointed whom. And in purple are people who were reappointed but under different auspices. Barry, my name is spelled incorrectly here. Uh, my name is Watler, W A T L E R Johnson, not Walter, W A L T E R. It's W A T L E R Johnson. What's wrong with Walter, Pat? <laughs> I know um, you're the Walter on the board. I'm the I, Watler. Remember, Walter, okay. we're Walter and you. Watler. I got you. Okay, I, I, okay. I would take that up with um, either Councilmember Abreu or the Borough President, probably the Borough President's office, as they're the ones who sent this. This okay. is not a document we typed or created, nor is it one that we use except to remind ourselves whose term expires when. Not and, a problem. Not a problem. Um, Barry, excuse that. me. I what? think Georgette's misspelled, so yeah. What are the colors again? What's the black? I'm black. What's that? Green green are new. Mm -hmm. Black are no change. And mm -hmm. purple are returning, but under a different slate, so to speak. Got it. Thank you. And what about the underlinings in red? Those are words or spellings that word does not recognize. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, Carolyn. I think I'm up next year. Uh, that is correct. You are right here, yeah. which is the 2024 expiration. Joyce. Yes, Barry, thank you so much. Um, for those people, what do, you, what do you think about this? For those people who were not appointed on the board, um, perhaps we can extend to them an invitation to be public members. I think if we were to increase our public members, it might help out a bit in the various committees, uh, in the community work. I came in to the board as a public member, um, we can explain to them the importance and the advantage of being a public member. If they so really wish to be a member of the community board, that's a great way to start. It definitely is. You know, we lost a lot of good people who were not reappointed. Monica Dula, Tiffany Khan, David Hansel, Aurelis Mejia um, are the ones that jumped to the top of my mind um, and about which I'm sure I will have more to say later um after june but um or after a meeting if you catch me with a drink in my hand <laughs> but um the public member route is something that we always encourage and have made very good use of i was also a public member before i was a regular appointed member um and those are handled at the committee level so as a refresher um if you have a member of the public who keeps attending and you want them to have a vote on your committee, you can have them apply to be a public member. You can have up to, I think it's half or so, the number of people on your committee as public members. Um, I'll have to double check that. But you know they have a vote, a formal vote on items in your committee, uh, just not at the general board. Um, and I don't think they count for quorum. Um, but the other thing I will add is that the issues with committee size and attendance that we're dealing with are with new members and existing members, you know, before dealing with public members. So, you know, committee size as a concern is, 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 is something we're focused on just for appointed members. Walter and then Daria. 
uh, what's my question now? Uh, oh, oh, 2024 expiration. Does that mean I, I fall, I go into the two year hiatus thing? No, these are just when your current term ends. None of us are term limited out until I think 2029 at the earliest. No, okay. Um, Daria. Um, just back to the public member thing, that might be a good way to, um, to man some of the ad hoc as well. Yes. Um, all right, but I do not see any more hands for my chair's report, so I'm going to turn it over to youth, of, or I'm sorry, to uh, Carolyn for the treasurer's report and then youth for the district manager's report. Is that right? Thank you, Barry. Yes. Good call. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. There are some changes on the treasurer's report. However, last week, Daria and I met with Barry and Victor and Luther regarding the budget, the upcoming budget. And um, we, on, we spoke about the year end spending and our goal, as, <clears throat> as it is with what we do every year, to relinquish all of our budget lines. In other words, we will not be giving any money, money back to the city. So I look forward to working with Victor and Barry again in the coming season. That's it for my report. Um, Chair, I have a question. Yes. Um, one of the things, because I, I had questions and they were answered. So thank you, everyone, in terms of the budget. My question was pertaining to the rent and what have you. Has that been resolved? Because we were in the rares. Has that been taken care of? We're not um, going to get booted out of our space? We will not get booted out of our space. Yutha, have we gotten resolution from Jay at LMB about that? No, we haven't. They haven't responded as yet. Hmm. Um, they're waiting, actually, for our response, Barry, to their... To Spiro? Not Spiro, but Jay. He's saying that we had over 163 k in the budget and didn't know why we couldn't pay it. Like they forgot that we had to pay the arrears for West Tall and group assistance. When we left our old space, we were in arrears. Hmm. Oh, no. Okay. And we shall. Yeah. Right. They act like they don't have this information, but okay. Exactly. Anyway, exactly. we we will we will remind them of it. That won't be problematic when we come to June thirtieth, will it? No, it will not. Not at all. I mean, it'll be problematic for Columbia. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that, well, okay. They will not want the embarrassment of having exactly the city board with picket signs <laughs> stating that. We got evicted with all the hard work we do in the district. That's right. right. For a mistake for a mistake that they made. And we had no say in the negotiation of our lease. Right. They we don't want that on a on a link kiosk. <laughs> right. Yeah. Maybe we should. They didn't invite us to the sit down or anything when they would when they were negotiating the lease. When we moved in, they just had me a book. And I could go through a book of things that happened. Victor can also when we moved in. Mm -hmm. And Barry, yes. We went through something last year. Right. Yes, we did. So, yes, we did. All right. So that's still being addressed. Everything else with the budget, we're on point. The the rent situation is pending. And um, yeah, I, just let me know what else we need to do to get right. Columbia to move. Monique, you can write a check if you like, if you want to know oh, something. Can do, okay, huh? let me take out my checkbook right now. I, I strongly advise writing checks to Columbia uh, yeah. against writing checks. Um, <laughs> the, the, um, by Carolyn? I said, by all means. <laughs> the, the, the one piece I will say, first of all, is that if you are um, doing an event, please bring your receipts to Yutha so that they can be reimbursed to you as soon as possible. Second, if you can think of any equipment that the board needs that your community the committee could benefit from in the next year, 
Dario, we've addressed the business cards issue, and we will have a We will be able to print our own business cards on cardstock. Is okay. the is the resolved item there? Thank yeah. you to Miriam for that suggested solution. Um, but if you can think of any equipment, we are going to purchase another portable projector and screen. Our screen was falling apart. Um, we are also getting a bullhorn. Ted, we're making sure to get a large red countdown clock with a buzzer. buzzer. Um, thank you, thank you. Um, but if you can think of any other piece of equipment or software subscription, one of the things we are looking at is a an account to a grants database of funding opportunities that may be helpful for not local nonprofits. You know, it's an expensive subscription, but um, if they want to then come and use our subscription in the office at the new public terminals, um, they'd be able to find out about grant opportunities that they might not otherwise um, by using our subscription. We also need blankophone and speakers, uh, the economic development. Oh, really? And we don't have speakers or microphones. Mm. Don't we? That's what I was told. Oh, we, we did, but a lot of Barry, we could talk online. Offline. Okay. A lot of stuff is missing. Oh. All right. We should add that then to the list. I just um, did a follow up for the email that we sent um, in regards to like reusable branding presentation, like the the signage, the lanyards. Um, just things to hand out in events that would be generic community board nine that any committee could use. Yes, we have that on the wish list. So can can we count that in? Is it is it a go or a no go? It's a go. Oh, great. Oh, even in lanyards. OK, because I sent something. I didn't know if that was OK. That's good to hear. Thank you. Thank you. And we also have a uh, tablecloth and a table for spring and summer events. If you like to use it for an event, you can pick it up at the district office. It's an eight foot table with a tablecloth with our logo. Wonderful. And, uh, yes, our logo and um, emblem on each side. We're looking to get, Barry, what are they called? The banners that stand up on each side of the table? Vertical banners? I don't know. Yeah. 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 Right. Get some table of table well. banners, yeah. Do we have a step uh, repeat? Zendesk or oh, uh, that's a good Zendesk. idea. I'm sorry. You did I knew there was something else. Did you hear that, Utha? No, I didn't. Do we have a step and repeat? And repeat? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know why they're called that. Um uh, Solomon Zendesk or Salesforce subscription is also on the buy list. It's a, it's a design command because you step and you repeat, step and uh -huh. repeat, step and repeat. You're taking the logo and you're repeating it. Step, repeat, right. step, repeat. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think it was something else. Yeah. Today I learned. But yes, if you can think of anything else, please, um, please email it to Yutha and you can CC me and Victor and Monique and Carolyn and Deirdre. Um, Okay. Any other questions for the treasurer's report? I will just also remind folks, I think I announced it, um, that we are adding or looking to add budget line items to our budget to pay for, um, where am I getting background from? Um, to pay for staff development, um, like professional development, um, and also interns and fellows. Um, so we have not had a budget line before for internships and fellows, and now we can create one. That doesn't mean we have to use it, but but we'll have the option to do it more easily. And maybe we'll get summer youth employment folks next year. That's that something. We can I think that would be a great like internship yeah. for to offer it like the city should really offer that as an internship like with community boards like any kid that's interested in civic service or politics mm -hmm. this should be a serious like internship no, i agree pitch that to the borough yeah. president and why not add a senior or two while you're at it why don't you go you're right <laughs> that's also a good idea 
Well, I will add that we, may, we, we, we should have taken this opportunity when the queen of interns was our borough president, Gail <laughs> Brewer. I don't, she she used to have it's interns true. spilling out into the hallway. It's true. Um, it's true. But uh, but we will definitely raise this with the borough president's office. Um, so moving along, uh, Yutha, uh, the district manager's report. Good evening, all. In addition to my report, I have some recent information to share. Uh, Department of City Planning Director Dan Garodnik today announced the early start of the annual community district needs uh, process, where the city's 59 community boards prepare statements of need and identify funding priorities for their districts a vital step in the city's annual budget process. These statements help inform neighborhoods and infrastructure planning and the equitable and efficient delivery of services to communities citywide. Every year, community boards are required to submit their budget requests by October 31st with the city agencies responding to the request in the city's preliminary budget released in January. Throughout the year, the boards gather data to access local conditions and get input from the public on the neighborhood needs. Then hold public hearings in the early fall and finalize the vote on priorities. In an effort to be more inclusive, transparent, and collaborative with community boards, Department of City Planning is following through on its commitment to open this process earlier. Starting in June this year, rather than August, this change would help to fulfill Mayor Eric Adams' goal to make government work better, give boards more time than ever before to collect input, prioritize requests, and submit before the, and submit their um, budget requests before the deadline. Basically, Adams' staff went to him and told him that community boards, because the district managers were holding meetings, and we had been asking during the de Blasio administration that we need to start the process earlier. Eric listened, his staff told him, and he listened, and he spoke to DCP, and they are extending it. Not extending it, but they're doing it uh, prior to the August uh, submission. They're doing it in June. So Barry mentioned homework for the summer. I guess I'm the bad teacher, because every June, I would ask the committee chairs to add on their agendas for June, their budget priorities. So it's a little work that they have to do in the summer, but it makes it easier in the fall when we go through our budget consultations and then we have to have our public hearings on a budget requests. So I guess I'm the bad teacher by announcing this, but I'll be, I'll be so. And Barry, you forgot to mention that um, we'd like to start a budget task force, which I think is a great idea or a committee, I'm not sure which, but I think that's a great idea because they would oversee and make sure that we have, uh, we meet our deadlines, which I do anyway. So I will be working hand in hand with them, but it's great to have a committee and uh, give board members the opportunity to sit in and just go over the budget process. I know some find it boring, but it's actually interesting once you understand how the process works. Um, yes. I'm happy to help on that because I understand it and know yes. like how to Ms. dig Young, for data. You are great. Yes, you are. You would be great for that. Um, are there any questions regarding that? Is this? Yeah, sorry. Where's my hand raised? You you can, you're the only one. With, go ahead. <laughs> um, uh, is this is one of those things that I hope that um, in the spirit of collaboration that we could utilize the link uh, NYC for to advertise and maybe nobody will look at it, maybe nobody will come, but I've been seeing them, I've been seeing posters at the bus stops, but I haven't noticed them on any of the linked NYC. Um, so what, what have you noticed? Like, Cause I, there's two things going on. Is the participatory budget and then there's the um the dcp um any of the budget things that we want collaboration on okay okay it's, yeah because i've i've seen it at bus stops uh they have posters at bus stops it says something like how do you want to spend new york city's money or something like that that's the, oh, that's, um, that's, yeah. the that's, that's the people's money mm-hmm 
but yeah. whatever what I'm just I'm just uh suggesting whatever that we might want collaboration on that, that, that's the city's civic engagement commission trying to come up with a reason for themselves to exist oh um, <laughs> the, 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 um, shady shady oh I got a lot of shade in me this month um <laughs> the the uh budget sorry oh, specifically specifically though for um youth education and libraries i think it was district five last year that was very helpful in sending us their capital and expense wish lists by school oh. if we could encourage six four and three i think we have one school from three or something um, but anyway, if we can encourage the other superintendents to send us their wish list by school, that would um, that would make our lives a lot easier come budget prioritization time, because we could then, you know, we, we would then be calling, we would then be prioritizing something that we know the superintendents are already asking for. Um, and but maybe districts we have their their own separate capital hearing um, budget and plan, it's just not aligned with ours, oh. but you, it's, it's a document. I mean, if you want the one from this year, just take it and, okay. Yeah. Um, um, Barry, question? Yes. So, sorry, I, I was looking at or doing something else when this question was asked or stated by Yutha. We're looking to create a budget committee or a task force? Task force. I see. So starting it off as a task force and trans and making it quickly become a committee. The uh, the we we haven't made any decisions about that. You know, there's questions. Is it is it a standalone ad hoc? Should it be a standing committee? Uh, those are those are things to debate and work out. If it okay. is a standing committee, we would have to vote on it. Right. Um, first as an executive committee and then as a general board. Got it. Okay. Um, so I guess so, this will continue offline, this conversation? And and into the next fiscal year, yes. Okay. Thank you. Barry had a quick continuing. question. Continuing? Okay. What, I wanted to continue with my report. That wasn't it. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. The Manhattan Borough President's Office contacted me today to inform me that they have N95 and KN95 masks available for pickup at their Northern Manhattan office. They are guaranteeing 200 masks for CB9. I have also left a link for additional information in the chat. Uh, city sites in Manhattan that are distributing masks is the FDNY Division 1, 100 Dwayne Street, FDNY Division 3, 207 West 77th Street, and the East Harlem Neighborhood Health Action Center at 158 East 115th Street. Masks are also made available at Grand Central Terminal, Penn Station, Fulton Center, Jamaica Station, Main Concourse of the Port Authority Bus Terminal, South Wing, the Denny Farrell Riverbank State Park, oh. uh, Harlem Park at the Welcome Center, Main Entrance at 145th Street and the Roberto Clemente State Park in the Bronx. Also, um, the newly opened HDFC Resource Center will be hosting a community forum on Wednesday, June 21st at the forum on Columbia University's new uh, Harlem campus. They're still saying new West Harlem campus, but it's been there for some time. The forum is, well, it's where we have our general board meeting. The event will accommodate uh, 400 guests in their auditorium. A full house is expected. Mm. Um, the panel is currently on information uh, to include, okay, on information and will include representatives from the legal, financial, and government sectors, all with deep knowledge of the HDFC housing community. Also, this weekend, um, the Historic Preservation Conference will be held on Saturday, June 10th at City College at the Spitzer School of Architecture from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, 
WHDC, they're busy. Uh, they also are having a youth fair on Wednesday, June 14th from two to six at the forum as well. And last but not least, paid bio internship, New York City virus hunters will be offering a free 25 hour long hands-on science course for high school students grades nine to 11 at the bio bus in Harlem this July 3rd to the 7th. No courses will be held on July 4th uh, from 9.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. The course will be a mix of going out into the field to collect samples, followed by wet lab work in the laboratory and data analysis uh, using computers. The NYC VH prep course will take place at the bio bus uh, at 605 West 129th Street. And as I stated, it will start on July 3rd. I left the registration link in the chat and um, more information about this program. Uh, the link is also left in the chat as well. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Question, you sir, I could say Barry as well. Do we, any idea how we can get better advertisement out about the People's Money Project? Um, I've, been in, I've been, not cutting you off, Victor, I've been including it in my report, and uh, we we have been sending out emails. Uh, we could start on a, um, a weekly basis, and as it was suggested earlier, we can uh, draft up a flyer that we could um, have added to the Link NYC kiosk as well. And okay. community boards, any kind of community board activity, is free of charge. Okay, good, good. Um, probably also want to reach out to uh, local TA presidents and maybe have them flyer the buildings or have flyers in their lobbies or something to yeah. make sure they know about it. Just a, just a thought. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions for you, Sa? Okay. Um, where is my agenda? The next item on the agenda is the report from the Nominating and Elections Committee. Laquita, you are up. Sorry, I had to unmute. Uh, thank you. And hopefully there's not too much background uh, noise that you'll be getting. Um, our committee, uh, consisting of uh, five members, lost one of its members uh, in the reappointment. So uh, Tiffany Kahn, and she was, you know, very, very helpful to our committee. Um, in her stead, uh, the chair uh, appointed Juan Colmenares uh, in her place. And so he attended the very next uh, or next to the next uh, se session that we had which included the uh, test ballot. So uh, we received um, 12, 14 nominees, uh, volunteers from the floor, uh, candidates night. And we're lucky that um, we had 16 participants all together. Signe, uh, who was the elections nomination chair in 2021, served as our consultant on the election buddy. Uh, so in conversations with her, we mapped out uh, with uh, an email was sent to all of the volunteers, giving them instructions uh, that they would receive their ballot at a particular time, which they did at 7 p.m. sharp on this past Tuesday, which was the day that the majority of them stated that they would be available. So they received their ballot at seven. We wanted them to experience the two hour wait period, which would be similar to what would ha happen on uh, at the general board. We would start specifically at one time and then uh, make announcements that people should review their, um, make sure that they get their ballots in. So in this instance, um, we were to have a wrap up session at nine o'clock to make sure that there were no issues. Uh, and we did have 14 participants who were able to 
um, be part of the wrap up, but we had six, um, uh, 16 that participated in the voting. One person did have difficulty uh, on her end with uh, her laptop or whatever technical difficulties. So uh, she was not able to vote. And so that just signaled to us that we need to remind everyone uh, that our phone numbers um, are in the PowerPoint presentation. We'll make them available in a letter that will go out. So if there are any problems voting, um, that they could contact Sydney or me right away. Um, the wrap up for the most part um, indicated uh, from the discussion that no one had problems voting. You know, we had fictional um, characters like the chair was a competition between uh, Donald Duck and I uh, forget that competitor's name. Uh, and then we had Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse uh, becoming first and, and second vice chair, et cetera, et cetera. So it became a lot of fun as well. Um, there will be a PowerPoint presentation on the election process emailed to every board member um, about two days prior to uh, the general board meeting. So probably uh, June 13, you should look forward. What we are most concerned about is having your uh, email address um, that you want your ballot emailed to. And it's really important because of the access uh, key and the password that you receive uh, with that so that there's only one, you know, just to ensure that there's only one ballot and, and the correct person is emailed to, to vote. Um, so please look at the letter. Uh, it could be that even though we have your accurate email address that you may be positioned somewhere else and want uh, or something happens to your computer and you want to make sure that you get the ballot and you'll have to use another email address. So that letter will be sent out and uh, along with the PowerPoint that you can review and study. Um, and that is it to date for the elections committee. Uh, it's been a good run. Thank you for serving, Quita. I have a question and then Walter has a question. My question is, if someone is attending in person at the forum, can they vote on paper? Um, well, I, that is a good question. It's not one that we uh, necessarily thought about. But yes, we could make uh, paper ballots uh, available. Um, so yeah, we'll have to make paper ballots available just in case something does happen, even with their cell phone or other. Yes. Okay, thank you. Walter. Yes, it's a good question. Thank you. Laquita, I must have been that odd person that didn't uh, get into the um, the, the, the nine o'clock summary. I didn't oh, get Oh, yes, Walter, of, but thank I you for voting. Thank yeah, you but I didn't get any uh, indica indication that there was going to be. A, I looked, I saw Signe's email address, but I didn't see anything oh. inviting me to the wrap up. So I just want to let you know, but I did vote. Yes, you. You should have, maybe maybe it was missed, but there were instructions on, on that. So I'm sorry that you, you missed that, but your name was on the list with the email address and it should have um, had the other attachments there. So um, I apologize for that. But yes, you were, uh, you voted and we mentioned that that night, <laughs> but, uh, and you're on the list for voting, uh, but right, you did not, uh, you were one that uh, didn't make uh, the wrap up. So I thought you were in the move in the theater as you had indicated. No, That's I didn't make I it. So I just, you know, I didn't even make it. Uh, okay. But, uh, I apologize. Things happen. Don't, don't, you know, it was my pleasure. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it is much appreciated, uh, both of you. And so now we will go into the other committee reports. It is 740. It would be great if we could wrap up by like eight and eight o'clock. Um, so if we can keep the reports brief, if you have events that you are primarily interested in announcing, uh, it might be better to just send them to you to, to send out via email, but, or you can put them in the chat. Well, Barry, just a question about the mm -hmm. ballot. You have the form already there are ballots here to vote with. 
That is what I asked Laquita, and she said that we will also have paper ballots drawn up to vote on. No, some people will vote on Zoom via the election buddy system, and we just have to make sure that if they vote with a paper ballot, that they do not vote on election buddy. Can't vote twice. Well, I understand that. Thank you, Baron. Thank you, Carol. And also, if she's voting in person, there may be someone who's on phone uh, we could use because everyone has a distinct access code and password. So that's another way we could possibly do it also. We'll yeah. work it out, but I'll make a notation of Carolyn because we did mention Carolyn, Ted, and well, at one time it was to Anthony. That's, those are the ones we knew might have an issue because of last time and landline and computer difficulties. Uh, Thank you. Forgotten. We'll reach Thank out. Um, so Shanika, I'm gonna call on youth education and libraries first. I think I'll go backwards this month. This month. All right, all right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Chair. I will keep it very brief. Uh, we had a great meeting in May. I wanna highlight the New York City Urban Debate League. They work with middle schoolers and high schoolers. And I think it is so important and I will be sending to you, Ms. Yutha as uh, they send us stuff for when they start to uh, you know gear up in September for the new uh, quarter, for the new year. But I think it's so great that the young people, not only do they speak and they get like speech improvement, but they also have to research what they're arguing about. So it's not just always off the cuff, it's really putting in a little extra effort to learn about why you feel, you know, or why you're going to back whatever you have to back your position and go into the history of it. I believe it makes us better speakers and more confident in general, and the proof is there. And then really, I just want to give a quick shout out. Oh, we had more than Side High li Library attend for the first time since I've been a co-chair, since I've been on YEL, which was great. And they have a big teen center and they have anime club and that's the library on 114th and Broadway. So please, you know, let people know. I've been sharing stuff uh, that we've gotten, but we haven't gotten anything new. But um, unfortunately, a lot of the teen stuff goes unused when the teens are the ones who need it the most right now because our teens are struggling. All right, and then I will wrap it up. I will give a quick shout out and thank you to the health committee, uh, Ms. Lakita, Ms., uh, Ms., Mr., Sir Edwin. Um, and I appreciate you hosting BioBus and Hypothecates uh, to learn about the environmental uh, kind of aspects of what we can do in the city and what we're doing in CB9 in particular. So I just wanted to say thank you for hosting them. They were very interested in having their students learn more. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Shanika. <laughs> um, we will next go to Pat and Carolyn for uniform services. Um, yes. We had a good meeting. We had an extensive presentation by the MTA for the ADA accessibility upgrades for train station at 107. Uh, it's in my report. If you'll notice that this project will begin in September of 23 and it will end in 2025. There will be two elevators, one on the southbound side, one on the uptown side. Uh, they will be doing Stair work, they were doing platform work. As I said, it was very extensive. It's in my report. It's in my uh, report. It's a long report, so it's in the so the you know, so it's in the time I'll keep it for you. Thank you, Carolyn. And can I just point out for everyone that the first uh, new accessible station on the one line between 96th Street and I don't know, 190 something, 200 something is going to be in CB9, smack dab in the middle of the district. So, very exciting. As I said, yeah. um, Donald said that it's been a long time coming, and the uh, 137 station needs a lot of work. Yes, it does. So, then you're going to put a lot of work into it and look forward to a like, brand new station. We, we do have those very retro square um, green and red lights, though, on the entrances. Um, they didn't say anything about taking them down. So, in fact, I'll ask them about that as well. It's very 70s. Um, thank you. 
next up, we will hear from, am I getting this right? Landmarks, Preservation and Parks, I think is reverse next. Senior issues, but that's okay. Oh, senior issues. Nope, Walter, you said it, you're up. Okay, uh, Shana Brew came to uh, our meeting as a guest speaker, answered quite a few questions. Uh, we had also a small presentation from someone from Housing Connect regarding that program. Um, I did bring into the uh, into our new business uh, the desire to start meeting in person in September, and I think the consensus is I think they want to do a hybrid. Uh, some folks can make it into you know to our to the uh, board office, and some won't, won't be able to. Uh, I want to sit down with Madison to get the list of the folks that came to the um, senior resource fair and start sending our emails as well as contact some of the folks that used to come in person because a lot of folks are not coming. And the last thing is, uh, I understand that the mayor has slated uh, department, uh, it's aging department, I call it department aging. Uh, it's the NYC aging, that's the, the new term. NYC aging is, is slated for uh, a budget cut. And the group would like to collectively do a letter to the uh, budget, to the mayor. I'm not sure how, how do we do that. So I was gonna bring that up in new business, but the seniors, as well as the, the, the community um, persons and, and the, and the uh, committee members were all in favor of doing that. So that's my report. Would you like to make a motion to add that under new business? I sure would. <laughs> Member, Member Alexander has moved to add an item under new business, a letter regarding cuts to DIFTA, DAFTA, whatever they're calling it now, NYC aging. Is there a second? I'll second that. Seconded by Daria Hardiman. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those say nay. Aye. Meeting, the agenda has been amended. Thank you. Um, uh, uh, you have a question, Barry. Yes, Ms. Dunn. I'd like to, uh, the 26th precinct had a fantastic cruise last week. I mean, it was supposed to be for the seniors. This day was on. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. What it were you saying? The 26th precinct, police precinct, sponsored a seniors cruise last week. And it was a fantastic cruise, an enormous boat. It was on a Wednesday, an enormous uh, real boat that went up. All food was included, soft drinks was included, dance music was included. And I didn't see the seniors from board five. I was wondering, did the 26th precinct not tell the seniors in community board nine about it? Was uh, not informed, Marita. Didn't know anything of just hearing about it right now. Harry, yes, my, Carolyn. Uh, I, I gave it down. He was the Detective Harper was on vacation. He was under the impression his new partner, uh, Miss uh, Officer Cardenas, had gotten the information out. However, she didn't, is why we didn't know anything about it. And I said, you need that information to you as well. Thank you. Well, I, I, I do think, Arietta, that we should say something to the 2-6 precinct that this community board, I mean, the 2-6 is right in the middle of us. Yes, it is. And so I, I, I agree, Ms. Dunn. And I think we will now, I have, this is the first I heard of it, and we will take it up with the 2-6. Please do. Uh, I agree. Youth, youth and then Monique. Uh, yes, I had a comment most of, more so. Um, Walter, I meant to inform you that I met with Jalissa. She is the daughter of the owner of Mofunga on Broadway. And they invited or offered their restaurant. They have a new restaurant, like a pizzeria next door to Mofunga. And she said in September, the seniors could meet there. And I toured the, um, the space and it's great. I'm going to send you the pictures that I took. Sounds great, Yutha. Okay. Yes. 
they got restaurant relief money. <laughs> uh, Moni. Um, Walter, my question is to you. You said the council member attended your meeting, council member Arbu? Yes. And my question to you was, were you uh, satisfied with whatever answers he might have given, particularly since it's been brought up that his office doesn't appear to be a, a friendly in terms of people being able to come in and you know access uh, the um, access to staff. Well, so I don't know if that came up as a question. Well, Monique, um, he was invited by Carlton, uh, and and I'm also, I'm in um, C, uh, uh, City Council Nine, so I know we brought that up at, a, at quite a few of our. Uh, board meeting yeah. as well as executive meeting that he's not being responsive to the community. Yeah, um, I'm just happy that he showed up in the first place. I thought we were going to get a staff member. Okay, so I, I really thank okay. them. I don't want to browbeat okay. folks. I mean, this your job, is of course, but I, I'm still trying to get Cordell Clear or one of our representatives. I've been trying that for months, and I got confirm. I mean, I, confirmations and everything. I still haven't gotten them. So I, it's a I process. I will note. So the senator had to cancel her appearance at the how the uh, historic preservation conference this weekend because they are being held over in Albany until uh, the end of whatever the session date is. But I would expect that she would be much more available, along with our assembly folks, um, in the fall when they are not in session. Um, okay. But I, I try, I try to not have us fault our state electeds for being in Albany doing the job that we elected and pay them to do. <laughs> so, so Walter, thank you for answering that. Um, Chair, I'm sorry, I for, I had a quick question. I wanted to actually ask Carolyn while she's on, if I may. I'm sorry, it just occurred to me. Carolyn, I'm sorry. We had a quick uh, email text uh, exchange, which I know you're a part of. One of the questions came up as to whether or not we have a relationship with the sheriff's department. Um, because we you know, because we were talking about the cannabis, the, the illegal dispensaries, and how the sheriff's department is responsible for, you know, cracking down. And we wanted to know as a task force, do we have a relationship with the sheriff's department so that we can maybe begin to have a conversation around some of these illegal dispensaries that are cropping up? And I'm sorry I didn't ask that before. Uh, no, we don't, but I can reach out and see if I can get one of them to attend your meeting. I have to go through NYPD to get a particular person to attend. And once I find that information, I will let you know. Okay. I, I will also once again note, and we can get a briefing from OCM if, if you would like, that the state budget included in it provisions to give enforcement powers directly to the Office of Cannabis Management so that we are not entirely reliant on the Sheriff's Office to enforce the regulations. So I, I they, they presented to Borough Board. I don't know if that's on the Borough President's YouTube yet. If it is, you should take a gander because it was very informative um, and hopefully will give us more avenues to bring folks into compliance than currently, than prior they um, stepped so. up enforcement today. I don't know if you all have noticed, but um, something that we shared in the chat that I shared that we that they should be doing is like putting a seal in front of all the illegal businesses. Today, they started doing that to a bunch of businesses on Broadway, but in the 700s, 800s. So they're starting, They as of today, the state is stepping up enforcement because now the regulations are ready, but they are literally putting a huge seal oh. on the businesses that says this is an illegal establishment. Um, they're breaking the law, blah, blah, blah. Oh. I call it like the scarlet letter, like they should have That's been right. doing this months ago. That's right. Yes. And, and this, <laughs> and it's, and this <clears throat> conversation was spurred, particularly with the establishment on 145th, I mean, 140, what is it, 7th or 8th, and St. Nicholas, 148th and St. Nicholas, yeah. which because they're so brazen in their they're, they're all very one of them, one of them, the board was very the board chair at Borough Board was very outraged that they had been written up in an architectural review in either New York magazine or architectural digest for the illegal dispensaries interior design. Ooh. <laughs> 
Um, anyway, <laughs> anyway. Moving, not to, not to derail. Let's go yeah, back. Sorry, um, but thank you. So, Carolyn, thank you for that. Heather, yeah. Heather, Landmarks Preservation and Parks. Okay, I'm here. Um, let's see, Saturday, June twentieth. I'm just before I forget. There'll be a visual and arts jazz festival um, by Gwendolyn Black um, at Montefiore Park. I do believe. Um, let's see, in terms of the New York City Parks Historic Harlem Parks on June 9th tomorrow at Frederick Douglass Playground, there'll be a family day that's not in our district, but close enough between 3 and 6 p.m. Movie Under the Stars, it starts at about 7.30 p.m. There are three dates, um, June 15th at St. Nicholas Park on James Baldwin Lawn. June 24th at Morningside Park, um, and on July 7th at Carmensville Playground um, at 7.30 p.m. There'll be movies under the stars, and I'm sure Yutha will send that out. June 17th, um, that will be the celebration for Juneteenth at Morningside Park and St. Nicholas Park. So um, please look for additional information about that June 17th, the Juneteenth celebrations at Morningside Park and St. Nicholas Park. Um, let's see what else. Again, you already mentioned the Historic Preservation Conference is this Saturday. Um, <clears throat> I haven't, I've lost my speaking voice for the last two weeks, so excuse me. Um, Let's see what other quick announcements. Let's see. We're still trying to get the garbage cans between West 135th and West 144th on Riverside Drive. Um, Denny Farrell Riverbank State Park. Remember June 17th, the celebration of the park turning 30. So that's going to be free for all, include swimming, skating, the merry-go-round and environmental education expo at the Greenhouse and Learning Garden. It's gonna take place rain or shine. The athletics complex locker room renovation is complete. The aquatics locker room project will start after July 4th. The track and field project will be complete early August. Um, they're currently keeping the existing HVAC system um, through the summer. There are still plenty of spaces for summer camp for children between the ages of 7 to 13. So please, um, the, the camp will start sometime after the 4th of July. We'll get updates regarding when that will start, but it will be five weeks. It will be five weeks at the park. We'll, they'll include field trips to the other state parks and um, and, and other um, diverse activities will take place. So roller skating is open. They'll have they have DJs and for the the roller skating. Um, there was a question about the revitalization of the amphitheater, which is a capital project that they're that they have design funding for, but not the actual funding for. Um, they did graduate the New York State Park Police, the first academy graduation in three years. So there, there will be 12 new park police to hopefully regulate the bike riding that's been occurring in the park. Um, we did have a presentation. There's going to be some new sculpture artwork in the Morningside Park. Um, the si Simon Riggs, the sculpture, um, the Sculptures Guild president did a presentation. So look for that art exhibit made of terracotta. It's a kimono. It stands five feet high. Oh. It will actually be located um, near the willow tree. It's going to be a floating statue on the pond itself. So please look for that. And then later in the fall, around October, there, um, there will be a Harlem sculpture walk um, that was presented by Savona Bailey McLean. And that's that's it. Thank you, Heather. Um, I will just flag for you that 
uh, the office of director of Riverbank State Park, which has been vacant since the departure of former director Maurice Hicks, is apparently um, close to being filled. And hopefully we can meet with the new director once that is announced. Um, but I would Thank like you. us, to be, I would like your committee to be one of the first places he goes. Thanks so much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Barry, could I say something? Yes, Ms. Dunn. <laughs> well, apparently the Parks Department had a very big celebration of the Invisible Man at 150th Street and Riverside Drive, of which Board 9 apparently knew nothing about. Mm -hmm. I uh, Yes, I know. And the fact the Invisible Man statue that used to be directly, it was it was a, not that big, but it was a good size. It was directly in front of his home on 150th and Riverside Drive. It is now a gigantic statue on 150th Street in, in the park area. So when you come down the street with a car, you meet the big invisible sign there. But I didn't see anybody from Community Board 9. With the acceptance of me. Oh, well, Carolyn, you don't count. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> you, so, know, you know what I mean, Carolyn. You, you, yes, Victor. You not to be. Um, Ms. Dunn, there was a flyer that went out um, about, regarding that. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you didn't, uh, prior to that event, I saw flyers on a, a lamppost. I took a picture of it, sent it to the board office, and they sent it out. I never got it. You might have missed it, yes, but it did go out. Yeah, I, I, I think Yusa did send out a flyer about that. Yep. It was a very, not, it was really a very, very, very good event. I'm glad. I know Steve Simon took a lot of pride in that. Um, Sorry, yeah. um, Heather, and really everyone, I've been, this is something that I've been sort of stalking Yusa about for about the last month or so. Um, I've noticed, and have you gotten any complaints or any knowledge of the tree guards being removed in the neighborhood on tree guards, um, being removed in general? I noticed them several weeks ago that they were being removed from, uh, empty plots, uh, which I, even though the plots are empty, if they're perfectly good tree guards, considering the fact that when they're removed, they just become dog toilets. Um, you know, it it was concerning. So I asked about that. Then I noticed later um, that they actually planted some trees in said bare tree beds that are now dog toilets. However, the brand new baby trees have no guard because they removed the guards. Um, and while they were at it, they have removed tree guards, perfectly good in working condition, tree guards from beautiful mature trees that have always been guarded. And now they are now toilets. So Heather, have you been informed by this about park by parks? No, no, but I, I, I am aware of the new trees that are planted on Convent Avenue just from personal observation. Um, my only thoughts behind that is there are a lot of tree guards that have been installed incorrectly and illegally. There's a process that one has to go through in order to install a tree guard um, that requires certain approvals. So if my guess is if they're planting trees, um, you, you have to go through this entire process in order to um, make sure that the, the tree guards themselves are not interrupting the roots of the trees. And Sorry, in order for them to plant them, if that was the case, they may have been installed incorrectly. But if you can like give me the addresses or whatever of where you've seen the tree guards removed, then I can try to inquire. Okay. With the forestry, the forestry department. Yutha is. Also, um, have I also spoken with Steve Simon? 
and he's asking for pictures because he couldn't believe it either. And he's yeah, like, I've got, I have pictures and videos. And interestingly, because I was growing flowers a couple of years ago, I have a lot of pictures of just hap so happen to have pictures of places that had tree guards you know, like I said, perfectly good. Yeah. This, so, this has, these are did, not did, new. These are decades old tree guards. What? Daria, D Daria it, it sounds like we can maybe follow up with Yutha and Heather on this offline. Um, yeah. I just wanted to bring it up because I know I wanted to know if anyone else had noticed and they might also have, um, you know. Just, if you could just give me the addresses, D Daria, that would be helpful. The addresses of where you've seen it. Okay. Well, and they're not. You know, it's hard to say in front of the in front of the houses of where they're located, the address okay. for the house. Thank you. There are a lot. Thank you. Um, next up, we'll go to, I guess, housing, um, which has not occurred yet this month. Uh, but I will let everyone know on the agenda for housing is not only 1727 Amsterdam, where Health and Hospitals Corporation and Browery Residence Committee will be presenting their illegal project, but um, the we will also be hearing from Donald Notice and West Hall Group Assistance in their capacity as the community partner for the privatization RAD Pact program at Manhattanville Houses. Um, I don't know if there will be other partners for that project there, but at, at a minimum, West Harlem Group will be there. We will also be voting on a resolution regarding the city's proposed City of Yes Carbon Neutrality Tax Amendment, uh, I'm sorry, Zoning Text Amendment. Um, this amendment is designed to make it easier for building owners to put solar panels and other environmental things on their buildings that might otherwise be prohibited by the zoning code. Um, those three things will make the meeting very busy. I think the HDFC Resource Center might also be on the agenda. So it will be a packed night on Tuesday, the 13th. If you are interested in 1727 and wish to get into long in-depth back and forth with HHC and BRC, please do it on Tuesday because Thursday's agenda will be very packed and we are time limited in the forum. We have to be out of there by nine, theoretically. And they start flicking the lights off at nine. So rather than spend half an hour on this during the general board meeting, it'd be great if you could get your questions out on Tuesday at the housing meeting. Um, all right. I think that's everything for housing. I'm sure I forgot something from the agenda. But uh, the action items on those two things we will also address later in this meeting, putting them on Thursday's agenda. Next up, we have Laquita and Edwin for Health and Environment. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, our meetings have included uh, in recent months, clinical trials and uh, services uh, that in particular, uh, Columbia University's Irving Medical Center, uh, various departments are working on and some uh, jointly with other institutions. And this past week, it's important for us to say that we had uh, researchers uh, from the Alzheimer's Biomarker Consortium uh, studying the association between Down syndrome and Alzheimer's disease. Uh, this is an important study they're looking to recruit. Um, we will try to get uh, some document out, Edwin and I, in reference to um, uh, the various research projects and with phone numbers where if you, uh, as board members, or um, have some extension of, or outlet to other associations might encourage participation. If I may add, Laquita, uh -huh. you know, the, the effort to this is to make sure that we have a diverse pool in these research studies, because a lot of times these medications, they come to market and they do not have a sample size that reflect us. Um, and then, you know, this is, you know, why we find out that certain medications don't work very well among the black and brown communities. So mm -hmm. if we can allow them to know about these studies that are happening right in our backyard, 
um, this can be beneficial not only for them, but also for the general population overall. Um, and the community board is a nice uh, springboard for the community to know what's going on at these institutions. Right. And if uh, when we get the document out, we'd like for it to be disseminated to our general public audience as well with the contact information and something briefly on each of the studies. Um, and thank you, Shanika uh, and Deirdre for uh, mentioning uh, the bio bus coming to our uh, meeting. Once we got the letter from uh, Deirdre, uh, we invited uh, about the bio bus, we invited Dr. Maritzi uh, to come and she was very enthusiastic about the bioscience junior scientist internship program. And we really need to get um, more information out on that too, because they could, they're looking um, with a bit of a stipend for um, uh, several teenagers who are interested in science to be part of their um, internship program. And they were looking to try to fill that slot very pretty quickly. So uh, among our community board members, if we know some uh, students who are interested in science, uh, particularly high school, um, you can let us know, but you can let uh, Deirdre and Shanika know as well in reference to the bio bus. But that was a, a great uh, meeting with them. And uh, they are also looking for us and hopefully Edwin may be available um, and maybe Monique to talk to their junior scientist group in within a couple of weeks. Um, one of the other things I think it's important and, um, to mention is that um, we have um, the 5, 5G group headed up by Odette Wilkins uh, uh, and it's citywide that's kept us up to date on uh, Link NYC. And that's really uh, become a very major project. Um, I don't know if the rally, because I wasn't in town, I don't know if the rally did take place on uh, Wednesday or not, uh, but there was to be presentations at City Hall and they're covering a lot of topics in terms of the late 5G program, whether it deals with the digital divide, landmark preservation, towers near the schools, where studies show that children are badly affected. Uh, they're talking about reaching the zero point, uh, which you know a lot of us need to learn uh, more about. But anyway, the amount of energy the towers expend is great, and they can cause fire if not properly maintained. There are a lot of topics. And I'm so happy that I was at the meeting, but um, Heather attended as well from our committee. And so we are greatly appreciative to that. So, um, you know, we should combine our notes and see what uh, we can do. We need to have someone uh, consistently involved with that group as well. There are other updates. I'm not sure if we have some others, Edwin, um, based on resolutions we presented and trying to keep up and be accountable. Um, no, I, you know, the, the result that, you know, that we put forth with uh, the entire committee, um, Barry shared it. Uh, so, you know, our perspective from the Health and Environmental Committee comes from uh, making sure that these services at, you know, 145th, they're not, you know, um, eliminated, but that they, you know, are representing what the community needs. And I can go on and on about this, but uh, in that result that Barry put forth, it accentuates exactly what we need, which is not less, but if not more. Okay, that's that's it. We always have a lot going on uh, and everyone um, is invited to our, attend our meeting. We try to um, collaborate with other committees too, as we've done with uniform services and transportation with um, housing through our participation in the um, this resolution that's coming up, which is exciting, really it's so well done. And um, landmarks, uh, I think parks and landmarks are at least one thing. So, um, you know, we're there's always a reason for um, other committees and for us health and environment to connect. Yes. That's Thank it. Thank you. Thank you, Quita. Thank you, Edwin. Joyce, you have your hand up. Yes, Barry. Um, I don't know. 
So let me let me understand something. Smoking is not allowed in certain places, right? Uh, uh, outside their laws. Uh, the parks smoking is not allowed. Okay. Smoking is not allowed in the parks. Or beaches. Or beaches. Okay. All right. Um, so we'd have people who are, let me say it nicely, using marijuana uh, uh, for medicinal purposes, right? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> are they allowed to smoke in parks and beaches where people who are smoking cigarettes, for example, are not no. allowed to smoke? No. Smoke. So yeah, so we had um the Department of Health coming in and discussing this, and I think it was also discussed, you know, in the cannabis task force here. Um, the same rules apply for cigarettes and cannabis. Um, and one of the things with cannabis is that it's not only smoke when it comes to medicinal purposes. People can have it in tea. They can have it in other forms besides smoking. So when it's used for medical purposes, there's different you know, formulation that can be given besides the smoking, which is more, more commonly used for recreational than actual medical purposes. Okay. Correct. <laughs> uh, no. I think there will be some type of resolution that will have to come in the future uh, because people are smoking uh, marijuana every and anywhere. Uh, the yeah. festival that I did this past Saturday at the Jackie Robinson Park, there were people smoking. I had to go to them personally and ask them to move, you know. Joyce, uh, I Joyce? think what you're seeing oh, and, and, ahead, and I'm saying and I'm speaking, you know, from what you're seeing in particular in black and brown communities, this is like a form of freedom right now and rebellion that you're seeing in particularly in black and brown communities, a lot more consumption because this used to be criminal. So people are over, over, um, over celebrating <laughs> their, their newfound freedom that they can do this. Because I will say, whenever you walk around the city and you smell pot a lot of the times and you turn around it's coming from black and brown youth and i'm not saying this is a bad thing i'm just saying people are just excessively enjoying this this new frown freedom and abusing it to be quite frank and ocm needs to do something about it um, because this is not what happens in legal states so, so I just want to I just want to take a moment pause here. If if there is an issue that could be introduced in the appropriate committee forum about something that can come up later, let's do that there because it is eight eighteen and we still have two more standing committees plus the uh, task forces and ad hocs to go through, um, and then we have in our action items and our new business. Um, so, you know, if you have something that's new, that's not about what we're taught, that's not about something a, a committee has reported out, or that's not on the agenda for Thursday next week, uh, if you can just send it to the appropriate committee or introduce it there, um, you know, unless it has to be done by next Thursday, that would be appreciated. Um, so next up is Joyce and Ms. Dunn with Economic Development West Harlem Piers. Okay. Oh, well. Economic Development Committee is recognizing special businesses in the West Harlem area. We have discovered, we have been able to identify six of these businesses to, to be recognized by this committee and this board, by the board for this committee. You have to have a family owned businesses located in the same location for a minimum of 50 years 
I know anybody have a heart attack about that. Anyway, we were able to locate six of these businesses. And one business in particular has been located at the same location by the same family for 90 years. These six businesses are going to be honored on June 15th, prior to the general board meeting, but in the forum, uh, in that area of the forum where we generally meet, uh, because we have an extremely limited budget. Uh, the committee did not open this whole thing to the whole board, but I would like to invite the executive members of the board who would like to attend it's from three to six, June the 15th at the forum. Sounds good. Be Thank you, Ms. Dunn. Okay. Um, I think last, but certainly not least, we have come to arts and culture. Arts and culture, good evening. Um, we had a uh, a great last meeting of the year. Um, we had uh, African Voices, Arts and Jazz Fest NYC, Uptown Dance Academy and Harlem Swing Dance Society. They all have um, events coming up and those will be or have been sent out by our um, Artist Information Dissemination Subcommittee and also YUTHA. Um, we also spoke about uh, our new business. What, well, our old business was Harlem Arts Alliance coming back. And one of the things that uh, Boza is looking for is to try and create some collaboration between the Harlem Community Boards 9, 10, and 11. Um, we are very happy about that and looking forward to what we can do together. Uh, definitely want to get some permissions and things from my, our chairs. Chairs. <laughs> um, the new business was committee goals for upcoming year and funding requests. Uh, now, one of our uh, attendees actually had, who's giving, um, it's already been mentioned, she's giving an event at Montefiore Park had mentioned that there is a guard shack or some sort of information kiosk or something there that is not being utilized and has been wondering if there would be any possibility of activating that um, possibly for some sort of arts usage or outreach. Um, I did send her to the, um, to the parks meeting, so I don't know how that went, but I just wanted to bring that up also, um, in terms of our goals and our funding, it kind of runs together. It's all about uh, information dissemination. And we talked about the kiosks, uh, which we, uh, which I asked about earlier. We, um, we're really interested in how to spread the information and the resources. I think that the resource um, subscription that we're having, I'm not sure if that'll cross over to something that we can use, but uh, there's been specific requests for, you know, a, a new database or something, something. We just, we need to be able to get the information out in a more 21st century kind of way. Um, I found out today that we have, we do have a YouTube channel, which I didn't know about. Um, so maybe we can find a way to utilize that or whatever, but I really want to get that conversation going on all of our behalf, not just um, arts and culture. And the last thing, um, yeah, and how to spread the word, even with the board in general. I get so many emails that I'm just, I don't even get to read a lot of them because there are so many. And just wondering if there might be a way to solidify them into one long one, a, you know, a day or, or whatever. I don't know. I've seen it done um, with other boards, but just want to get that conversation started because it comes up in our meetings. The last thing that I just wanted to mention is uh, two of our grantees, I noticed um, specifically, they are, they are um, great organizations and doing a lot of things. 
However, when I ask them about things specific to CB9, um, they didn't have anything specific to CB9. So it's things that we could go to, but they didn't have anything specific to CB9. And I, I felt a little funny about it. <laughs> um, you know, I guess to, uh, to our hope of cross collaboration, um, you know, since they are funded by WHDC, we could make sure that our community benefits from those by crossing the borders. But I just had a little bit of concern about that and wanted to bring it up. And that is it for uh, arts and culture. And we are done for the year. Dari, I have a question. Thank you for your report, by the way. When you had noticed those concerns, did you ask them specifically about it? I did. I did. But, you know, um, I asked them what they, one said that she had something coming up in our community, but she couldn't tell what it, she couldn't tell us what it was. And the other one, um, the other one, actually, the person who was in charge was out of the country and she was sort of a stand in. So it just sort of brought up um, questions for me, actually, in terms of what constitutes you know we asked them to to come and report to us um but we didn't really set any specific criteria um everybody who reported um well at least like two of the people were off camera and that's going to be something i insist upon if you are a grantee and you're presenting that you'd be on camera um i you know if 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 they're not doing anything in the specific, in our uh, district specifically, I still have to sign and say that they came. They yeah. still technically, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, do what is supposed to be said. So that might be something that we think about in terms of our criteria going mm -hmm, forward. Mm -hmm. I, I was wondering if we can come up with a form that they should fill out before coming to any other committee and send it to us in advance at least a week or two prior to presenting. And in this form, we ask a specific question as to how is their services addressing the needs of CB9 and if they can provide us documentation of such. Because I agree with Daria, we want to make sure that CB9 is benefiting from all these organizations who are taking, um, you know, the money that is primarily allocated for us. That is an excellent question, and I will refer that to the Strategic Planning Committee. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank no you. Problem. Good idea. Good idea. This, this no came up a month or two ago uh, regarding <laughs> some of the people who were actually located like downtown, like everybody who... Mm -hmm did it that month were downtown. So sorry to interrupt you, Victor. Yeah, no, no, that's something I'm working on for the past several years. So we've gotten better. At one time, they didn't have to report anything and there was no monitoring of what they were doing. So we've come, I think, a long way in that point. Um, but we need to, we can talk offline and make sure a majority of it is being, um, at least if the, addresses downtown, the services are here, or they couple with an organization here to make sure it's a community center or school to make sure the service is being provided here. But we can we can speak about that a little further. On the kiosk at the um, Monteferry Park, that came up at Park's meeting last night. And because of um, utilities that run through that kiosk that are still open, they can't use it for anything like that. They said you could put stuff on the outside if you want to put something, put flyers in, they, they were willing to do that. But as far as opening up and using it, at this point, they couldn't do that. Okay. Just curious, what's it there for then? I can't answer that question. Okay. I think it still seems to be in the process of what the okay. original intent, intent is, but it's not fully completed. Okay, is it, it was an informational or um, gar a guard thing for that, the- They didn't say. Don't know that either. No, okay. but we Thank can you. find out. Yes. Well, I, uh, I was gonna ask, is there room to shape what it's going to be used for since it still sounds like it's being determined? We, we may have shaped it like 15 years ago. Um, 
uh, but yeah, we can definitely follow up with the parks committee on that. Um, yep. But thank you, Daria. That brings us through our standing committees. We will now go through any updates have we have from the ad hocs, the task forces. We'll start with cannabis. Miriam, you want to start? Um, sure. Um, I'm going to be very brief since it's late. Um, we met briefly. We are still looking at a possible letter um, hearing what uh, Joyce said, just a, a letter to send to OCM just on specific community board nine issues, uh, especially considering real estate and cord locations. Um, we had a community member attend this meeting that we met at the cannabis event at the forum. Carl, he has a block party every year, I believe on 143rd Street. And he would like for us to be involved and support and um, bring cannabis education if we can invite any uh, vendors to table. This event is, I believe, um, August 19th. We are closed. So this is this is the event that we were asking for to have um, branding, um, community board tabling and information ready for, even though we are on a break. We've been asked to participate and to reach out to some of our contacts in the cannabis space to table at their block party. Um, and that was pretty much it. Um, you want to add anything, Monique? Yes, we're still working on revising the guidelines that uh, will be used to approve legal establishments. Mm -hmm. So we are working on that actively and look to bring that forth uh, to, I guess, the executive board and eventually general board soon. And our next step, because we already reached out to Economic and Development Committee, we'll be reaching out to Uniform Services and try to pull together the information that we gather and use that to move us forward because as Miriam said this is a moving train moving quickly we want to get on board and control the direction it's going in so those are my comments thank you um thank you. we will we will definitely be continuing education um events next next year um we'll we'll look to partner at with other committees with seniors um youth education um, I attended the Cannabis World Conference Expo last week at the Javits Center and gathered a lot of information from all the higher education institutions that are currently teaching programs so that we could eventually have a program um, for the youth in our committee community. Um, our next forum or cannabis event could be more tailored to that. Um, and I believe uh, City College is holding something in July. Um, Deborah Levine um, let us know in our the month before, but we'll just let everyone know via email, but it will be at City College CUNY. They will have community education. I think it's like a week in July. Um, yeah, again, a series or something, yeah. We'll just share by yeah. email. Great, Mary, thank you. I had a question. Mm -hmm. uh, the governor said that um, they were going to allow um, cannabis to be sold at the farmer's market because of the backlog that exists with the farmers. Are you guys aware of that? I've heard of it. I've been to I've been to a few um, s small farmer events. That is a big problem that's happening. There's a backlog of products because of all these illegal spaces and only three legal locations. The farmers are sitting on a ton of products that is being thrown around. It is not official. It's not legal. It has not been, it's not happening yet. It is something that was spoken about at the last cannabis uh, board meeting. The logistics of how that would happen have not even been figured out. Um, but it would be like a farmer's market. Um, 
type thing um, where farmers would come with their product and sell um, a very closed contained location. Um, in full disclosure, I've been to a few of those already in New York State. They're happening. Mm. All right, noted. Walter, you have your hand up. Great question. Uh, what is the focus of the of the task force? I mean, trying to speed up licensing. The, I, I think uh, cannabis education is is a big part of it. But what other items um, are, are on your own agenda? So, if you haven't noticed, Walter, on every regulation that has been released. So this task force um, started. Um, really, we started working on this out of the health committee in 2016, specifically when I rejoined Community Board 9 in 2017, I put it on my application to re-educate this, this district on cannabis because I knew this was coming. We have been working nonstop, reviewing every regulation that comes out and um, submitting a resolution with feedback. Um, what is the benefit of us doing that? When a person goes on to the state and just gives a, a comment. The state doesn't have to listen to it. We've been in communications with every other community board in Manhattan. Every document we create, we share, vice versa. The guidelines that we are actually going to submit are the same as community board five. And what we're trying to do um, by working as a block, as a municipality, um, as Manhattan, um, that we get ahead of this, that we have a say in every part of this, um, because this was the Marijuana Regulation and Taxation Act was very specific and intentional for communities of color and people formerly incarcerated. We also feel as West Harlem, we have a lot of those people in our community. So there's a lot of economic development that comes with this industry, a ton of re-education, um, wellness and medicinal, um, youth, seniors. So we're just trying to get ahead of all of it, keep you all informed. We had a, um, a forum one Saturday, basically educating every cannabis, uh, every uh, committee member um, and community board nine member, because we will be reviewing applications the way we review liquor licenses. So it's in the best interest of every committee chair to be up to date and well informed on all of this. No one at this point should be wondering why and what, because we have shared information, resolutions, letters, and everything else to make sure community board nine is ahead of this. Very well said, Miriam, um, and, and I am very proud that you and the task force are really leading the way here in Manhattan. Um, so thank you. Yutha and then Darian. I'll be, I'll be brief. I just wanted to inform the executive committee that Haikil attended the Mega Evers yes. event last Saturday, and he brought back some flyers and other information, and he's going to submit a report. Fantastic. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Daria? I just wanted to piggyback off what Miriam was saying in response to Walter's question. Um, the, the earlier conversation about people smoking weed everywhere, and, and I've seen it in the subways and everything, um, the, the education on, uh, you know, economics and all of that, and including... Uh, these are the things that we're talking about because this question that came up today is very important. I was talking earlier about how New York, we don't get educated on things. And this is something new. People think, people think well, it's uh, legal now. So all of these 1500 fake dispensaries must be legal. It's simply lack of education. And so that we are out here trying to spread the word on so many things at the same damn time. Uh, but that's that's our goal. And Walter, I, and I, I think it's important to know, I actually met with um, the Office of Cannabis Management this week um, because they are going to be putting out information for seniors. 
and they wanted my opinion, um, I guess, because I'm an older person in the space, um, how to talk to seniors and how to do this. And I'll tell you, um, I've been hitting roadblocks because this is federally illegal and senior centers are federally funded. A lot of senior centers are afraid to have cannabis conversations, information, or any kind of wellness cannabis talk um, in their spaces because this is federally illegal. So if you want to help us get education out there to seniors, we will happily, you know, let us know how. And that'll be part of our our summer voting too. Yeah, uh, summer activities to get ahead. I would just tell you, Miriam, that, you know, um, having a conversation with the providers, um, us as providers, you know, we can talk to the patient about any different type of modality that they can that can, help, can help them alleviate the, alleviate the pain. So maybe so, they might not so let you. Edwin, I'm going to ask us to stop here. It's been an hour that we've spent on committee reports. Um, some of it digressive others pieces of it very important and productive i'd like us to wrap up with the ad hoc committees so that we can get on to the action items uh so we we can take uh strategic planning next okay thank you barry i will be brief uh I, we've not met this um month yet and last month we we didn't meet we'll be meeting uh later this month but just a couple of quick items um, I did reach out to the DA's office regarding a few places that are selling illegal cannabis. And actually, I think I mentioned it online, I received a flyer in the mail for one of these places on 148th and St. Nick, which I thought was really outrageous. Um, they have a few places in mind. They're going to be um, issuing cease and desist orders very shortly to these places. Um, so going to stay on top of that. Um, secondly, uh, I don't know if Ms. Dunn is still on the line. I followed up again with Steve Simon and Parks about a porta potty in the um, Hall and Pierce Park, 125th Street, as well as getting more and more and more people out there. And I think we deserve that. They have it up further on the Greenway and they have it on 57th and 12th. So I don't see why we can't have a porta potty here with a half a million dollars that they received from Columbia. So making that point, I sent pictures as well. Um, also, I met with Captain Rios of the Transit Division. Youth and I met recently with them about the vehicles, police vehicles parking in the bus stops at 145 in St. Nick, making it very difficult for our seniors to enter the bus. So we have to step into the bike lane, then up onto the bus. Since that meeting, I've been by several times. No police vehicles are in there, so I guess they are getting the message. Um, we were probably going to have to clean up 145 on the other side because people double park all along there. Uh, char two charter schools, the fish place, it's a mess. That, that's another issue to come up. And lastly, I attended last Saturday the Multicultural Festival. Um, it was great. I don't know if Joyce is still on the line, but Joyce, she did a great job. Um, the borough, uh, Stevens was there. The new 30 captain was there, Rivera. Um, I took a lot of pictures. We have some great shots of young people dancing, performing. Kudos to you and your group, uh, Joyce. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. We appreciate you. Thank you, Victor. Bravo, Victor. Um, thank you. And that's all oh, we'll be meeting later this month. I'll have more, but that's just wanted to mention those things, just staying on top of it. Fantastic. Thank you, Victor. I don't know how you do it all, uh, but you seem to. Uh, and I think that concludes it. We don't have a representative from the same gender loving LGBTQ task force present. Um, although a number of app of new appointees have indicated that that's a committee they'd like to serve on. Mm, um, let's see that. That's which good. is very exciting. Um, so he, he has a that, major event coming up next week. Oh, yes. John Martin. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, so concluding our report section, we will now move into action items. There is a very long resolution <laughs> regarding 1727 Amsterdam in your packet. Um, 
does anyone have any questions about that uh, resolution? Um, I am not. I don't have a, a question, uh, but um, I, I, I just okay. Did you say go ahead, Barry? Yes, go ahead. I this is Laquita. I just think it was so well presented, uh, especially considering um, how we were introduced to this project. And every single point under the whereas seems to be a critical point. So I think you knocked it out of the park uh, in terms of what they need to, to know. I, I didn't go through all 11 pages. I read the first, I think it's, uh, it's five, the whereas and therefore, which was um, uh, all of it's important, but I think those are critical. There are just a, a couple of little things that may be in rush rushing, you know, I could just email just related to, um, you know, maybe a T urgest or something like that. But I just think it's well done. It's something that everybody needs to know. In addition, uh, though, the second thing, uh, in addition to coming out of uh, housing and land use, I'd like to, uh, to propose that it health and environment also be included um, as a mention in terms of the two committees where this is important. Yes, uh, I'm sorry. I, I, th I thought I made that clear. Um, when it was added to the agenda earlier in the meeting, I said that the that that portions of it written by the health committee were voted out during your meeting. And the, the next step is to have the portions relevant to the housing and zoning and land use come out of the meeting Tuesday. OK, mm -hmm. OK. But I, I just think it's fantastic. And I hope uh, it gets into the right hands uh, where a difference uh, will be made in addition to the outrage from the community as well as from our board. Um, sorry, Barry or you thought I, I didn't see that attachment. Was that sent separately? No, it was in the 520 whatever email. Um, it, the attachment name is housing land use and zoning 1727 rezo uh but but liquida is accurate in that much of this rezo came from health and environment i didn't get it either Barry. did i mean i'm in health and environment it's so in the, it's me... in the 522 it, it's it is yeah. under housing land use yeah i have, i received it i saw it it's in that document yeah I mean, yeah. I'm sorry, can we have it make sure maybe later on it's resent? Because I want to make sure I maybe I overlooked it. And the vote is just for it to go on the agenda? Correct. Well, may I uh, ask for um, unanimous consent? Member I second Hardy, that. Unanimous consent. It's been seconded by Member Wilson. All those. Is anyone opposed to adding this to the agenda for next week's general board? Please let us know now. Going once, going twice been added to the agenda by unanimous consent. We will make sure, so the plan is for this to be sent out to the entire full board tomorrow in its draft form with all of the relevant documents attached, including the affidavit from last year where the deputy council swears under oath that the city owns it. Prior mm -hmm. to three months later telling us that HHC owned it. Yeah. Womp womp. Wow. I mean he wasn't under oath in our meeting, but <laughs> they they really thought they were gonna be that they were gonna just Absolutely. you know get this project done. Right. Yeah. And at so, so many levels was offensive to the community. So but the purpose the purpose of youth is sending it out in draft form with the relevant you know documents that we cite in the reso included in the email as attachments is so that everyone on the board can familiarize themselves with the resolution well in advance of next Thursday. Right. And, right. and it will be a standalone email that will explain that. Thank you. And then if people complain that they haven't had time to read it, we're going to know who didn't check their email. Um, so. Thank you, Barry. Yeah, I definitely want to make sure I have time to read it. 
So I probably always I read every word. It is so fantastically done. Thank so you, Laquita. Half done. of it was written by you. So. No, <laughs> it would not half of it, but yeah, a good portion of it. Good portion yes. of it. But uh, the opening is what I'm dealing with. The background story okay. is so critical and um, gets to the heart of it all uh, with the health, mental health component as it was started back in 19, really 1968. But I think uh, the West Harlem, Washington Heights, West Harlem Inwood Group um, became a legal entity in 1969. So is that, is, you just really, that's not mentioned in this and I don't know that it needs to be, but um, you touched on every historical critical point. Right. Thank you. And um, you bring it back. I had a much shorter and much more profane version of it in my head that I did not put in the document. Um, so next item on the agenda, whereas they fucked around, therefore be it resolved, they shall find out. Yes, um, we, we saw right. that one. Yes. Uh, so. Uh, Virgin the, is. Yes, apologies. Where will, um, where will this... Um, Will it obviously to go to Eric Adams, but how are we going to make sure that he really sees it? There's a reaction because wasn't uh Deputy Mayor Sheena Wright supposed to come to one of our meetings and then all of a sudden? Uh, I, I will make sure be... I will make sure that she is on the recipients list, HHC will be on the recipients list, the Harlem Hospital AB will be on the recipients list. The law department will be on the recipients list. HPD will be on the recipient list. All of the electeds will be on the recipient list. This is going to go wide. Okay. And I wonder if it should go to um, the news or, well. And I talked to the, the mayor's office about it today. So this will not come as a surprise to them. Okay. Mm -hmm. they, this has been, they have been kept abreast of our position in meetings every step of the way on this. This is something that they inherited from Mayor de Blasio's administration. This is not a project that they have adopted a position on yet, is the, posi is the message we have received from the mayor's office is that they are undecided about this project. So. And is that why we haven't heard anything from Tiffany Brown? Uh, deal with the papers, that is to say, the Times, the Post, etc. We or, will be. And even or even Sheena Wright, because Sheena, isn't she a Harlem Sheena, resident? Sheena will be on the recipients list. No, I know, Ted, but she's we, a Harlem Ted, resident, we, we right? Probably she is have, a Harlem She lives resident. three blocks from this project. Exactly, um, okay. But anyway, Ted, we, we would have to write a much more concise press release, but it's 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 a good point. Um, next up on the agenda is we're asked the housing committee will be voting on a resolution regarding the city's carbon neutrality text amendment. We would ask that it be placed on the on the agenda for next week. I so unanimous will. consent. Member Hart expressed unanimous <laughs> consent. It's been seconded by Member Kovalev. All those in favor, all the, if anyone is opposed to adding it to next Thursday's general board meeting agenda, please speak now. Going once. On twice. It's been added by unanimous consent. Next up on the agenda, and I'm going to share my screen, are a ton of liquor licenses, although we've had longer lists. Um, so first are new applications and retail permits. Um, Pat or Carolyn, would you like to explain these entries, particularly number four, which I thought already has a license. Well, is that the No. That's La Esquina del Salmon. The new application. Don't they have a liquor license? No. Um, uh, they okay. Can, I can, actually, well, my friend is texting me who is, um, of uh, the new running that place and it's she said it's la esquina del um la esquina del sazon bar and grill not del Samon. 
Okay, may I may I um, comment on that, please? Also, yeah, um, uh, uh, when we did the the research through, um, uh, you know, for our for this particular meeting, it is called the new business is called La Esquina del Sazon Bar and Grill, doing business as La Esquina del Samon. There's already a license on that particular location, and the license is under the name of Mi Gran Sueno Grill and Lounge Restaurant Corp. Okay, so it looked, this is a new situation to me. I've never seen anything like this, where um, even though the new business doesn't have a disciplinary history or any other type of documentation, they, they're going to be taking over this business and and they're doing it under their license. Their license expires on December 31st of 2023. Correct. Wow. So this is new to me. I've never seen this situation. It doesn't mean it's illegal or wrong. I'm just saying I never heard of it. Carolyn, did you? Yes, I did because what they're doing is changing the application over. Okay. The SLA approval. And like when you have an application, it just explains uh, the uh, which one is that? Okay. So is this a change of ownership license, Carolyn? It's a change of ownership, yes. And the new licensee is taking over the business, but there's an existing licensed business already on there. So my assumption is, again, my guess assumption is that when the new business, if the new business license is approved, then that would, um, Carolyn, how would that work? Does that mean the old license will now be expired or how would that work? It would expire and then the new license for the LA, from SLA will be granted to the new establishment. Okay, right, because on the actual application is listed as a transfer application and the definition is an existing licensed business is being purchased and the applicant does not own the building in which the establishment is located. Right, and every, look at a life, you know, some, some of them have DBA, they come, with, they come in like the, the salmon, but they're mm -hmm. doing, doing business as what you just explained to them. Um, got it. So the DBA is staying the same. Right. Um, mm -hmm. It's got full liquor. I have a question for the new manager or owner, Daria, which is there have been like really weird events there with like strippers or stripping. What? Or, what? oh, listen, oh. I live like a block from there and I've seen some strange stuff oh. come up the subway. On the so corner? I'm just, I'm just going to ask slash request that what night mean, is that barry what night <laughs> I, I i don't know it is not oh. the type of thing that i am eager to attend personally mm -hmm. all right just check oh you can but, share you can see but, the information uh, now hello yeah i mean a lot of weird Hi. stuff has happened somebody used to mute themselves hello Hi, my name is Marilyn Del Brun. She's oh. the new owner. She's that that's her. So, Ms. Del Brun, welcome Hi. to the committee. <laughs> well, thank you. How are you? We're good. Um, uh, she, yeah, she's the new. I, I told her to sign in, Barry. <laughs> I, I oh, you like did. That. Oh, oh, but, you know these people. That's interesting. Yes. Yeah. So I, wow. I, I, I was asking. At the current location, there have been a number of, um, what is the polite word, burlesque performances. <laughs> um, yeah, that'll work. And, and I was wondering. We're not, I'm not doing that. Great. <laughs> I am not doing that. I am the new owner of La Esquina de Sazon Bar and Grill. Um, we're under construction right now. We're renovating the whole place. I am um, in good standing with the owner of the building because he also told me about that. So I am in compliance. <laughs> Great. See, you all thought I, I was making it up. <laughs> um, huh? Okay. So, but 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 this is this is confirmed true that that did happen. Well, I don't know. They it just was stories, so I can't say yes or no. I'm just changing the vibe of things. I'm doing it for the community. Great. So well, we're no, I, changing it, everything. I, I, I witnessed that. 
uh because i passed by there on my way home from the subway um oh, okay yeah it was weird because otherwise it was a where is this what are this we is on one this is on 137th and broadway where the old um grand what was it one bar and grill 137 grill 137 used to be across across from montefiore plaza yeah uh, near the train station yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. um mm -hmm. so okay it's good to have you on uh how late do you expect it to be open we're gonna stay open until um 2 30. Mm -hmm. 2 30 uh, in the morning yeah well only on the weekend only on um saturday when there's like um the super bowl or if there, I already talked to everybody that lives in the building. I went and introduced myself. A lot of people know me because I lived in the neighborhood for 56 years. So I wanted them to be comfortable. If they have a problem, they could call me directly. I really took over like a month and a half ago. Great. So that's when everything was final. Um. And I have a question for you. Do you know what's okay. happened? Do you, does that place have the basement of that building or do you know what's going on in that basement? Um, I don't know what's going on in that basement. Okay. We great. have a, the, where they cook the food is downstairs, but the basement part of the building, I don't know. I can't okay. tell you. All right, perfect. Well, thank you for joining us and answering our questions. This is helpful. We were a little confused because it was under new applications, but there is an existing building business. So thank you. you well, that's how the yeah. application had read. It was listed as a new application, transfer application. So, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Edwin Torres has a question. Um, okay. Barry, the new form that we have for CB9 for this establishment would answer a lot of the questions. Um, when is that form going to be utilized and sent to us? I will have to have a conversation with Carolyn and um, Pat and the staff about that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, exactly. So, okay, hold on. We're getting a lot of crosstalk. Go ahead. So I also invited the state senator to come in so we could talk about the issue of the neighborhood and the, the, the old newsstand that's been there for a long time that's um, harboring, as you know, as you walk by there, a lot of drug addicts. Mm -hmm. So she's going to come in and um, talk to me when we reopen in about two and a half weeks. Okay, yes. great. She's and I'm getting everybody on that, that. block. Yeah, I'm getting everybody on that block together so we could kind of, and we also have the the community police department at the 30th precinct that's also going to join us so we could figure out a way to get that under control. Great. Uh, and Solomon Prophet, who is our secretary who's on, lives on that block. Basha mm -hmm. Nikonarov, who was on the board, lives on that block. We know many people on that block, so we'd be happy to help okay. get the word out. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good evening. Oh, have a good evening. Bye-bye. Um, are there any other questions about the new liquor license applications items three through five? Three through five. It's been renumbered because of the new action items. I'll share it on the screen. Thank you. If not, could we have unanimous consent? One second, Miss. Second. One second. I just want yeah, to hold on. Thank you. Uh, the gateway. The gateway is it's the getaway. 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 Sorry. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's going to be in the rotunda, rotunda down in the lower part of the park. I actually visited there this week and sort of doing the work um mm -hmm. yeah it's right near the bridge denny fowl bridge mm -hmm. uh, that looks good proceed right. so, Sorry. thank you so member hardeman has moved for unanimous consent member alexander is seconded is anyone opposed to putting these on the agenda for next thursday 
once, going twice. Okay, they're on. Uh, renewals, we have uh, six through 10, Star Lounge, aka Little Street Lounge, which is 126 Hamilton Place, where the cloakroom was. Riverbank Restaurant, aka Sofrito in Riverbank State Park, Skinny River Inc., aka Skinny's Cantina, Shake Shack, and Clove Indian Restaurant are the renewals. Is there any discussion about these renewals? Question on Cantina. Um, yes. We previously had noise complaints coming from Cantina. Um, I've heard it myself. I don't know if that still is an issue. 3333 residents are complaining about noise um, in the evening coming from that. I can't hear you. Carolyn, speak up. Clean that up. We got a report that they did clean that with the noise coming from here. So at this jump, there is no noise complaint as of, I think, March. Uh, I, I, yes, go ahead, Barry. I did ask around, um, and that was also the report that I got, although okay. there is some feeling that the place across the street on 12th Avenue, Panda, Panda? where the old Solomon and Cuff was, right, uh, may have some issues, but but the, 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 the general consensus was that Skinny Cantina has been behaving itself. Okay, fine. My understanding, Barry, uh, from... Um, the, uh, the, you call it the, the, the cop they said was saying that uh, the bander is the bigger problem. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> uh, with regard to item 10, uh, can someone give a uh, cross street on one one thirty ninth to one fortieth, I believe, on the downtown side of Amsterdam Avenue, across from City College. Next to so Barry, one thirty ninth to one thirty eight on the oh, south. Yeah. Side. Yes. Sorry. Thank right. you. Right. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Next to mm -hmm. Fumo Restaurant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank on the you. downtown side of the street. Right. Mm -hmm. Any further question? If there are things like noise complaints, now is the time to bring it up. Um, I think the big one was Skinny's Cantina. Oh, also, I will note, I forgot to add, uh, during the health and environment report, we as a board have been pursuing for some months data from health off the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene regarding licensed non-tobacco hookah establishments in our district. For those who don't know, tobacco hookah is illegal inside anywhere in this city. Non-tobacco hookah is only legal with a permit from DOHMH, which they have not issued since 2017. According to the data that DOHMH finally coughed up, we have no licensed hookah establishments in Board 9. So I will note that Skinny River Cantina offers hookah. Well, that's news to me that there's no hookahs in our district. There's no licensed hookahs. No licensed hookahs, right? Correct. Wow. Okay. Yeah, Mama Shus, Mama Sushi has. I mean, Barry, this is why it's so so critical to have that form completed because we will have the response in writing. It will give us a window as to, you know, what is taking place in these businesses that we are just saying, hey. You know, we're giving the stamp of approval. Harry, we, right. we cannot use that form. Once we review the form, we proceed, Edwin. I think that was said already. We're going to yeah. take a look at it with the committee and then move forward. Thank you. Good point. I, I, I agree with you there. And I also put on there um, the e-bikes, also <laughs> important to me. So we will take a look. All right. Is there any object? Oh, no one's moved yet, have they? I move to accept the items under the renewal section as unanimous consent. I second, second that. Moved by Member Hardin Cordero, seconded by Member Hardiman. Is anyone opposed to adding these renewals to the agenda for next Thursday's general board meeting? If so, speak now. Going once, going twice, 
the items have been added to next week's general board meeting agenda. That concludes our action item section. Is there any old business? Hearing none, we have an item under new business from member Alexander. Uh, good evening, all. I'll keep this short. Uh, the consensus from the Senior Issues Committee meeting was that we'd like to do a, a group letter to the mayor regarding um, his plans on cutting uh, funding to NYC Aging, which is the new name of the agency. Um, that's my 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 um, contention. Ma Walter, may I recommend that it also go to the city council speaker and the budget negotiating team? Are we talking about uh, mine and, and nine or to both of them, nine and seven? I mean, uh, yeah, nine and seven. You said city council, right? Uh, the speaker of the city council. Oh, and then the, oh okay, speaker, got you. And, and got then you. there is the speaker's budget negotiating team, a.k.a. the BNT, that is the counterpart that negotiate with the mayor's administration for the final budget. I don't have that information. Could you forward that to me, please? <laughs> yes, I'm just <laughs> suggesting that we address both of them. That's great. But yes. More the merrier. Right. So you will have a draft of this to you by the end of day Monday? Yes, sir. All right. Mm -hmm. Is there any discussion about this matter? Uh, move unanimous. Member Kovlev has moved <laughs> unanimous Second. consent. Seconded by member Hardin Cordero. Is anyone opposed to adding this to the action items for next Thursday's general board meeting? Going once, going twice. It has been added to next Thursday's general board meeting agenda by unanimous consent. Is there any further new business? Motion to adjourn would be in order. So moved. So moved. Ten. Moved by Member Thompson, Second. seconded by Dr. Torres. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 All Good opposed, night. say aye. aye. Ayes have it. Meeting is adjourned at 9 12 p.m. Wait, save the chat. Everyone be safe. Wear a mask while we're going through this air quality situation. And run your air purifier if you have one. Mm -hmm. Marita, Marita can you run that information we get gas about gas? the businesses to do this so we can have it in email? <laughs> oh, I would love to attend that. Something. That sounds very exciting. Excuse me. Someone was saying something to Marita, and I don't yeah, know. Yes, about the, uh, the the six businesses that you're, that you're recognizing for long-time um, um, service to Harlem. Yeah, right. I think there's gonna be, um, I'd like to attend that. So can you put that in the... Um, I would, too. Yeah, it's gonna be a oh, great I have mercy. Hold on, and I'd love to know the names of them. That would not yeah, be nice too, so that we could patronize them, you know, I before. No. I guess Sorry, you started the meeting. Can you save the chat, please? I did. Save the chat. Okay, save the chat. Good night, everybody. Hello, Good night. Good night all. Hello, board members. I'm just asking you to let the uh, board. Office no, because the what's the name? I forget her name. She she has a list and they tell us Madison. Madison. Madison, just let her know you want to come. You're the one of the jump your executive okay. board member and you're coming. That's it. Will do. Thank okay. you. Thank no you. problem. Hey, she guys Good night, all. Okay. <laughs>